Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says in his presence there is fullness of joy. Show your neighbor that you have that fullness of joy. That that fullness of joy resides in you. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's begin to wave our hands unto him. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, God. This is the 12th Hallelujah. month of the year. God has kept you since the beginning of this year. Technical, please help me with the volume, please. Hallelujah. God has kept you with, since the beginning of this year. You are alive from January. February, you are still here. March, you are still here. April, you are still here. May, you are still here. June, you are still standing. July, you are still here. August, you are still here. September, you are still here. October, God has done great things in your life. November, God has done great things. And December, God has done great things. And in January, that is coming, you are going to testify to his goodness. Why not begin to wave your hands onto him? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We're just going to let go. This is holy moment when God walked in on us. It's very simple. Every case is on your lion and the lamb. We'll take it again. This is holy moment. This is holy when God walks in on us, when God walks in on us, every case, every case, every case is on the, on the lion and the lamb. And we take it again. This is holy moment. This is holy moment. When God walks in on us, God walks every gift, every gift on the lion and the lion. Now listen, and oh, when the glory, when the glory comes, oh, there be no one to say, oh. Glory come, the glory come. There be no one to say. Oh, 
oh Lord, you remain the same. You will never, you will never, you are the Lord. so tired, Baba. Sing it from the depths of the You will never. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Wave your hands unto him. Hallelujah. We we'll receive upon us the garment of praise to lift you up like never before. We we'll lay upon us, we we'll lay down every garment of worry. Every garment of pain is destroyed this morning. And we we'll receive upon us the garment of praise, the garment of joy. The Bible said the sound of joy will be heard in the tabernacle of the righteous. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank we Lord. worship you. We praise your name this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How many of us are excited to be in church this morning? Come on, put your hands together. Your head, your hands, and your whole body is going to rejoice this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. We are going to go the Makosa way this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Come on! Where my dancer this morning? Are you here with me? Make some noise! Come on! 
under the earth. Bless the name of the Lord. Exalt him. Exalt him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to worship before you. Thank you, Lord, for it is written in the last days, the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth even as the waters cover the sea. Thank you for bringing forth upon us this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for the glory of your presence. 
that is released upon this assembly in the name of the Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory. The beauty of our God is upon us. Take all the glory. Lord, have your way. We have not programmed you in this very, in very meeting, oh God. Just do as it pleases you. We give you all the glory for the power of your presence that is with us. Influencing everything in this place in the name of the Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Go ahead and celebrate the King of Kings. Hallelujah! Praise the name of the Lord Jesus! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Please welcome somebody by your side as you take your seat. Speak nice words unto them. Hallelujah! 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 Prophesy to them. Hallelujah! Prophesy something beautiful even upon them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. For the first round of ministration, I hope you are expectant today. Is somebody expectant? Hallelujah. The Lord will speak to you according to his will in the name of the Lord Jesus. To begin our rounds of ministration, blessing the name of the Lord, please join me as we bring up here the Battle Axe Drama Group. Hallelujah. Celebrate them as they come. Amen. Amen. Good evening, sir. Uh, we thank God, sir. The family is fine, sir. How about your family, sir? How are the children, sir? We thank God. Uh, yes, yes, yes. My husband went out this morning. Yes, he went to the bank so that I can pay the rent, sir. In fact, he should have received it safe. Maybe it's the bank. You know some bank, bank issues and all of that, sir. Uh oh, you will get it today, sir. Failingly. Yeah, yes, you will get it today. You'll get the house rent today. Unfailingly, sir. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you, sir. Uh -uh. Darling. Uh -uh. Good evening. Huh? What happened? Don't touch that, please. Uh -uh. Please. Did you change your shirt? <laughs> what happened? Uh -uh. Oh, God. Why is your trousers so dirty? <laughs> Eh? <laughs> what happened now? They used me to mop floor this morning. <laughs> Ooh. Ah. I'm just I'm just I'm just coming from the height of terrestrial ignominy. Break it down. What happened? Disgrace. <laughs> Who disgraced oh, you? Oh no. <laughs> In this Lagos. If it is one person, that would have been better. It was a collective disgrace. Are you serious? <laughs> oh God. I was just trying to explain to this traffic official. Treat people with super patriotism. Hyperbolic jingoism. Treat us with respect. Because I'm driving Corolla doesn't mean I, I, I don't deserve respect. That's what I was trying to explain to him calmly. Without violence. Ah, if you see what my eyes saw. It was an eye saw. Break it down. What happened? All this grammar, I don't understand. Who beat you? What happened? How? Where? Ah. Who are those people that gathered to beat you? Do you know? <laughs> they were weapons fashioned against me. Weapons? Ah. Kilo shelle. What so, happened? See, let me explain to you. See, you, you, you don't understand. I need to explain to you. Okay, I'm all here. It's okay. What happened? Ah, oh, oh, God. Just watch. Okay. Let me show you up. <clears throat> You have no right to tell me not to go. You have no right. Because I'm driving Gorilla 2010. You are passing people that are driving Benz. You are passing people that are driving Range Rover. See, I know your father did not have oh, bicycle. Okay, I bought this Corolla with my sweat. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. I bought Hello, no sir. Hello? See, this problem you want to cause today, I will show you that you Hello, sir. Like you treat us with sweat. Please. Can you please leave the road? Let's please. move now. You are causing traffic. You are part of the problem. When things are going bad, we should address it. The enviary of an identical plumage is spasmodically congregated at the most contagious proximity. On top of what? You can't. Rest of the same feather, the floor together. I'm not going. See, I, I was supposed to be the one that you should pass. You are looking first to pass at a traffic point. Uh -uh. At a traffic point. Okay, don't leave the road now. Hey, please. Please. I will show you. 
I will show you this one that you did. I know your father did not have bicycle. You know bicycle because your father bought car. You will not embarrass a petrol. What's, what, what's happening here? What's happening? What's Thank happening? God you came, sir. This man has been beating us. Ah, okay. He slapped this official. He slapped me. If not that you came late, he would have slapped you too. Ah, this man. Ma, 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 he was slapping everybody. Yes, sir. Where is this? Ma, why would I slap? It, that's a, remove remove, slap remove his khaki and, and, and throw. Yes, sir. Remove his skill. Say his skill. Yeah. Yes, Thank sir. You. Thank you. Yes, sir. Take the car to the rest. To the yard. Okay. What? Well, Excuse me. Good afternoon, sir. What is the problem? Sir, this, this is a cuckoo business. Okay. I do not slap him. How, how can I slap him? You, you have evidence that you didn't I, slap I, him? I have the evidence. Okay, there's no problem. I didn't slap him. There's no problem. Gather all the evidences you have together. Okay. And articulate your points. Okay. Come and meet us in our yard. Why would I go to yard to go and present this? This is my brother. Thank you, Okay, Dr. Lolo. I'll get me to beg you. Madam! You slap him! Okay, I did not, I did not slap you. Okay, I did not slap you. Did I say you slap me? This is a cuckoo. I, I told you to go. And you were you were you were you were you were raising your shoulder. You raised your shoulder. Okay, you can I, go. I wasn't raising I was just trying to explain to you. Okay. Should be say you have all the evidence. I do have and you take it to the office. See, as Maga has spoken, his word is final. Nobody in this world can change it. So I should follow them. Just go. Gather your evidence and go. Okay, I'm busy, please. You can, you can shift. <laughs> so is How did you not get out of this? That was how it happened. Are you serious? <laughs> so what happened afterwards? <laughs> All these traffic officers, they're just, they're just lawless. Okay, see, Corrupt! I was, I was just trying to explain to him that, that, that a civic duty should not be a, 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 a garrulous experience. That was all. Now, when we now got to the yard, because mm. <laughs> a problem was waiting for me in bulk. What did they not collect? They started from two million. I begged them with the house rent. <laughs> Which house rent? Which one are you talking about? Now? Maybe I went to the bank in the morning to collect money for house rent. Yeah! That was the one that, <laughs> it was the house rent that saved me. This one is a God saved me. It was house rent. Our, our house rent that you went to the bank to collect for the landlord. I would have been in a cell now. You better thank God I even used the house rent. The cell I would be now. For the problem you caused! You gave our house rent. Something that the landlord is expecting of any little I was just trying to explain the concupiscence. Oh, you boy, you know, ne? Is this grammar? You don't have any outer of patience. You use the house rent to say to these people, how are we going to get the money? Is everything, you don't have patience. You could have just moved. Move. They said move. You just move. Move. I was but you want to show them that you understand English. You want to show them political justice? Are you not ashamed of yourself? A old Christian displaying on the streets. Where is follow peace with all men in all these things? Is this the peace that you are following? So you allow the devil, you gave the devil a room to, 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 to display all these things. Okay. Because the problem, thank you, Jesus. Okay. Okay, so our house friends is gone like this, Abby. Okay. Okay, so... What are you going to eat by that name? Don't mention. There is Eba. There is Amala. Don't mention. There is Efo. Don't mention. Ah, you will eat. Oh. Ah, you will eat so that you can have the energy to expend to the landlord. So that you, you, you expend all this political jingoism. And you expend to the landlord. Patience. No. Oh God. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Huh? <clears throat> People of God. For some weeks now, God has been using his servants to teach us about understanding the lordship of Christ. It is true that Christ is our savior, but the dividends of that salvation is enjoyed by submitting to his lordship. The benefits of salvation is continually enjoyed when you follow him. What does it mean to submit to his lordship? Obey him without questioning. The instructions of God are not on the table for negotiation. They are not subjected to your opinion. In this kingdom, it is do as commanded. Why? He is wiser than us. He sees more than you do. We should not be appropriating divine instructions with our human emotions. Look at this man. The Lordship of Christ says follow peace with all men. If you had just followed that peace, the house rent will be safe. 
All he needed to do was to obey God's word, no matter what you feel. See, outside the boundaries of God's word, the devil is waiting to pounce. That is why the scripture says, he who breaks an edge, the serpent shall bite. Your security is in submission to his lordship. It is your disobedience to his lordship that gives the devil the opportunity he's looking for. The Lord will give us grace to obey him in Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for the Battle Axe Drama Group. I hope you've been ministered to. Hallelujah to Jesus. For another special administration, let's put our hands together as we welcome up the, as we welcome the Rema Mass Choir. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Help me greet your neighbor and say happy convention. Happy, happy anniversary. The church is 38, 36 years um, of age, and God has been faithful. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave. Romans 8, verse 32 says, He who didn't spare his only begotten, but gave him to us. How will he not with him freely give us all things? Let me turn to your neighbor and say, That thing you are believing God for has been given to you freely. Say it convincing. Say that thing that you are believing God for has been given to you freely. Be blessed as you listen in Jesus' name. Break. 
Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Shall we rise, everyone? Glory to Jesus. Lift up your voice and thank him for his faithfulness over your life and over this ministry. This ministry is 36 years old. We will have been in Lauren, but God set it up that will be in the zones. Father, we give you glory. We be, we give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Father, we give you glory. We bless your name. We bless your name. Father, we thank you for your wonderful works to the children of men. We bless you, Father. We honor you, Father. The name of Jesus, we give you honor. We give you honor. You are beautiful. You are wonderful. You are marvelous. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You are going to pray, God, speak to me this morning. Use your word to change my situations and my circumstances. Oh God, beautify my life this morning. I want you to pray. Beautify my life. Send your glory upon me. Send your beauty upon me. Upon my walk. Upon my destiny. Let the glory of God come. Let the power of God come. In the name of Jesus. Speak the word that will change my life and destiny. They say money. The word that will change my life and destiny. Father, speak. Speak to me, O oh God. Speak to me, O oh God. Lega balokata ya bando sukata ya. Rege de ye bolokata ya. Mando sota lege bado kosheta ya. Lega balokota ya barakata. Jege le bado sukata ya. Rega balota ye bado sukata ya. Ge balo kota ya balo kota ya ba. Rege ge de ye ge bodo kosheta ya. Le ga balo kota ya balo kota ya ba. We worship you, God. We magnify you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Look around you and welcome the person seated by your side. Thank you very much. God bless you. Take your seat. We give God the glory. He has been faithful to us. To some, since we have started this convention, especially the word session, because uh, in this convention there are so many things which we are not able to do, the, the sports, festival, and the rest. But the word session started on Wednesday. And we have listened to quite a number of messages that have transformed our lives, especially the people that came. I believe this morning God has a word for you. Can you tell your neighbor, say, God has a word for you? And that word will change your life for the better in the name of Jesus. I believe somebody will move forward, somebody will gain ground. In Jesus name. So without wasting time, let's appreciate the ministry of our Father in the Lord, Reverend George Adigboye, this morning.
words we use to describe this church is that it's a church where expectations Proverbs 23 verse 18 that's where I'm speaking from Proverbs 23 verse 18 Proverbs 23 verse 18 I know the name, uh, one of the words we use to describe this church is that it's a church where expectations become and I can, eat, I can see that there's a little addition now. Expect, uh, Proverbs 23, 18. This is the word of God. For surely there is an end Everybody say there is, there is a name. And thine expectation shall not be cut off. The title of my message this morning is Becoming More Open. We have been talking about Ephata, Ephata, which means be open. There is a way in which we have been looking at that word, Ephata. But there is a different way in which I want you to look at that word this morning. Look at that word as referring to you. Becoming more open. Shall we pray? Father, add your blessing to the words you've given me to share with your people. Stretch forth your hands to confirm the word. Touch their lives. Change their lives. Fill their heart with the fruit of a better life. Thank you because the things we have learned during this conference that we have received, that we have had, and we have seen. Lord, they will not stand against us in any area in Jesus' name. But they will profit us. And the fruit and the results will be there for everybody to see. We honor you, Father. We extol you. In Jesus' name. Becoming more open. I wanted to pay very close attention to me this morning. There are so many things that God wants to do for us through the Holy Spirit. If only we can be more open. The Holy Spirit is the distributor, the executor, and the administrator of the things of God. And there are so many things he wants to do if you and I can be more open. If you and I are more open, we'll be in a better position to receive what is distributing. To experience what is executing and to partake of what is administrating. If you only can be more open. What are the things God wants to do for us through the ministry of the Holy Spirit? What I'm saying to you is as a church, as a person, and as a family. There are many things the Holy Spirit wants to do. But most of the time, he is disappointed. He is not encouraged because we are not as open as we ought to be to him. I have been in places where I have discovered people are more open than other places. I was puzzled as a young Christian. There are times you go to a place and you see miracles and signs and wonders and wrath. Great things happen. And you go to another place and nothing happens. When I was a young, young Christian, I was always worried, confused about why it was so. Why is it that two people will stand under the same unction? Two people who are children of God equally. And then knowing that God is not partial, but yet one person receives so much 
and the other one receives nothing. For years it puzzled me. And I had to go to God. Job said in Job 29, 16, the cause which I don't understand, I search out. If you don't know something and you see God's face, he will explain them to you. Because according to Matthew 13, 11, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Why is it that someone will receive so much a manifestation and someone else will receive nothing? Dealing with the same God, one cripple will stand, go home healed, another one will come and go back home the same. As a young Christian, I was confused. I was bothered. At the point, I started feeling that God was partial. I started feeling that, why would God do such a thing? But as I read the scriptures, I saw that God is not partial. Romans 10, 12 says there is no difference between the Jews and the Greeks. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon his name. I saw 1 Timothy 5, 21. We had a scripture says, let nothing be done by partiality. I saw 2 Chronicles 19 verse 7. We had the Bible says, three things you not find with God. You not find iniquity. You not find taking a bribe. And you not find respect for persons. I saw Romans 2 11. Which says, for God is no respect of persons. I saw Acts 10 34. We are when when Peter entered the house of Cornelius, Peter said, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. I saw Ephesians 6, 9, where the word of God says, neither is God respecter of persons. I saw Colossians 3, 25, where the Bible tells us, God is no respecter of persons. But God, why is it that two people will come into your presence to receive the same thing? And one person will go full and filled and overflowing. And another person will go as it were empty handed. Is it because you don't care? No. Psalm 55 verse 22. Cast your cares upon the Lord. He will sustain you. He will never suffer the righteous to be moved. First Peter 5 7. Casting all your cares on him. For he cared for you. Is it because, oh God, you have changed your mind? James 1 17. The Bible says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither any shadow of turning. Malachi 3 6 says, I'm the Lord, I change not. Is it because you have forgotten to love that person the way you love the other person? No. Jeremiah 31 verse 3 says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Ephesians 2 4 says, the great love wherein he loved us. John 17 23, he says, my father has loved me even as he has loved you. But why, Lord? Why will one person be filled and full? Why will one person enjoy a blessing that is meant for everybody, but another person will not experience it? Is it because you have forgotten to be gracious? Isaiah 49, 14. He says, Zion says, the Lord has forsaken me, the Lord has forgotten me. But verse 15 of Isaiah 49 says, can a suckling mother forget the soul of a womb that you don't have compassion upon them? He said, even if they do, God said, I will not do so. Because according to verse 16, your names are graven on the palm of my hands, the walls are ever before me. But what, why, why, why does it look like I'm being forgotten? Why does it look like you're passing by me? Why does it look like you're touching people? You're passing me by. Why? In those days, I used to imagine, is it because probably the power of God is not enough? So you cannot go around. But that cannot be. That cannot be. The psalmist said in Psalm 62 verse 11. Once he said it, twice I had it. That power belonged to God. 
I Psalm 66 verse 3. How terrible are thou, O God, in thy works, through the greatness of your power, shall your enemies submit themselves to you. God is excellent in power. Job 37, 23. He says, God is excellent in power. Now whom 1, 3 says, God is great in power. Psalm 147, verse 5. He says, great is the Lord and of great power. So it cannot be, because his power cannot go around. But why, Lord? The Holy Spirit wants to do many, many things. Hear me today and know this in your heart. I will give you seven things the Holy Spirit wants to do. Seven things the Holy Spirit wants to do. Number one, the Holy Spirit wants to do new things. The Holy Spirit wants to do new things. The Bible tells us on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came down, the people spoke in a new tongue. We are told on that day of Pentecost, when people saw what was happening, there was a conclusion in Acts 2.13. The Bible says the people said they were filled with new wine. The Holy Spirit always wants to do something new. There is a way in which he has operated before. But there is another way in which he wants to operate. But the big thing is, are you open enough for him to do something new? The degree of your openness and my openness will determine the new things he will do. Many of us are so close to the point that we expect him to do today what he did yesterday the same way without adding anything to it. But the Holy Spirit is always wanting to do something new. If it, if it was one way he came yesterday, he wants to come in a new way. He wants you to know him by a new name. Many of us have known the Holy Spirit as healer. He wanted to know him as the opener of sight. The opener of your ears. The Holy Spirit wants to do new things. I have come to a point now where I am so open to the Holy Spirit that I allow him to do new things. And there is a song we sing in Nigeria that says, Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Today. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. One of the characteristics of a wind when it blows is that it brings something fresh. Something new. Something that has not been but that will be from that time. All of us are human beings. We love new things. When a new baby is born, everybody wants to look at the baby. want to handle the baby. We want to kiss and hug the baby. But when a 92-year-old man with one tooth in the head walks into the building, how many of you want to kiss him? Newness is attractive. And the Holy Spirit is conscious of that. The Holy Spirit is a wind of refreshing. He wants to do something new. Remember, the title of the message is Becoming More Open. Becoming more open to the Holy Spirit. Becoming more open to the Holy Spirit. Because he wants to do new things. New things. Royal Correction. It's time for some new things. It's time for some new dimensions. It's time for some new moves. It's time for some new levels. It's time for some new heights. It's time for some new glories. It's time for some new power. New things. New things. Isaiah 48 verse 6 says, Behold, I show unto you something new. New. I love that word new. It provokes me. I, 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 I desire something new. The Holy Spirit wants to administrate something new. He wants to move in a new way. He wants to say new things. He wants to do new things. He wants to deliver by a new hand. When Samson was going to kill people in the book of Judges, 15, 15, the Bible said he looked for the jaw 
it, it, it knew uh, he looked for the jaw and a new jaw of an animal and that was his weapon newness is a weapon in itself you are now operate under a new covenant based on better promises the old is past the new has come romans 4 6 6 4 god wants us to live in newness of life romans 7 6 god wants us to serve a newness of spirit the Holy Spirit wants to do new things. Number two, the Holy Spirit does not just want to do new things. The Holy Spirit wants to do more and much more things. He wants to save more souls. He wants to attract more attention. He wants to do new things, but also wants to do more. But you and I need to be more open. He cannot do more without your being open. He cannot do new things without your being open. He wants to do more. Much, 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 much more. In the Bible, I saw this. You will notice a progression from the beginning of Acts of Apostles as to what the Holy Spirit was to do, was able to do in terms of salvation of souls. In Acts 4, I mean in Acts 2, verse 41, the Bible says, and 3,000 people were added to the Lord. Acts 2, 47. The word of God tells us. He says, and people were added to the Lord daily. Such as should be saved. First of all, he gave us a definite figure, 3,000. Then he now says, people were added to the Lord daily, such as should be saved. Acts 4, 4. He said, 5,000 people were added to the Lord. Acts 5, 14. He says, multitudes were added to the Lord. By the time you get to Acts 6, 7, he said, multitude were multiplied, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. By the time you get to Acts 8 8, he said, the whole city, the whole city of Samaria, was touched by the power of the gospel. The Holy Spirit wants to do more. Don't shut him out, don't cut him off. Psalm 105, Psalm 105 verse 24. He said, he increased his people more and more until they became greater than their enemies. The Holy Spirit wants to do more. Some of us are so satisfied with the job you have. You are so satisfied with where you are. You are so satisfied with what you have seen. You don't want anything more. The God we serve is a more and more God. Proverbs 4.18 The path of the just is like a shining light. Shining more and more unto the perfect day. More and more. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.2 says grace and peace multiplied unto you. Through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3 says, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Verse 4, he said, We are by given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these promises we will become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lost. He wants to do more. Thank God we are not who you used to be, but you are not yet who you ought to be. Where you are today cannot be compared to where you are going. What you have seen today cannot be compared to what you are going to see. There is so much more left in the armories of heaven. He wants to do more. Everybody say more, Lord. That is why I like that song. More of your glory. More of your power. More of your spirit in me. More, Lord. They are looking at someone who is not satisfied with a cup full for as long as there is a bucket. They are looking at someone who is not satisfied with a bucket for as long as there is a drum. They are looking at someone who is not satisfied with a drum for as long as there is a tank. And you are looking at someone who is not satisfied with a tank for as long as the ocean is available. There are new possibilities. More, more. The Holy Spirit wants to do more. As a young Christian, I am never satisfied. And as an old Christian today, I'm never satisfied. Someone asked a man of God by the name of Swedigusworth. He said, when are you satisfied? The man of God said, I'm satisfied only when I'm dissatisfied. You have cut short what you can have. You have cut short who you can be. You have cut short where you are going because those little things satisfy and satiate you. The little you have Looks like the greatest you have ever had. 
There is so much more left in God. There are high, deeper dimensions. There are higher dimensions. There are greater glories. That is why Psalm 71 verse 12 says, I will increase your greatness. You are already great. He said, well, I will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. Let me share something with you here. Psalm 48 verse 1. Psalm 77 verse 13. Psalm 86 verse 10. Psalm 99 verse 2. Psalm 104 verse 1. Psalm 95 verse 3. Psalm 96 verse 4. All of these refer to God as great God. But there is a verse of scripture. First John 4 4. Listen to what it says. He said you are of God little children. And have overcome them. For greater is he. You see, if you are not a Bible scholar and you read that verse, greater is he. You will think what it means is that God is greater than the devil. Agreed. But the Greek says, the, what he said is that, in, what he said is that you have a possibility for a greater manifestation of him inside you. He's not just saying God is greater than the devil. He's saying, if you allow him, he can be greater in you. He's a great God, but his manifestation can be greater. He wants to do more. Lift up your hand and say, More Lord. Say it again. Say, More Lord. Say, More Lord. Hebrews 13 14. He said, For here have we no continuing city. We seek another to come. First Chronicles 11, verse 9. David was greater and greater. For God was with him. Esther 9, 4, 5. Mordecai was greater and greater. For God was with him. There is a possibility for more. There is a provision for more. There should be a desire for more. Because God, through the Holy Spirit, wants to do more. Real connection. God can do more. God will do more. God must do more. But we have to become more open. He wants to do new things. He wants to do more things. Number three. Get me today. Another thing the Holy Spirit wants to do as the administrator, executor, and distributor of God's things is that he wants to do things at a faster rate. At a faster rate. There is a rate at which the Holy Spirit has been able to do things for you. There is a rate at which the Holy Spirit has been able to operate. But he wants to do things faster. The God we serve is not a slow God. He is a God that is fast. One of the things God is compared to. First John 1 John 1.5 He said this is the message that we have received of him. That God is light. Ever say light. Now, when in modern civilization, when they want to say something is fast, one of the things they compare it to is the speed of light. And God is light. Light. So he wants to do things fast. Luke 18, 8. He said he will have thanked his elect speedily. Psalm 102, verse 2. He said he will he said, answer me speedily. Psalm 31, verse 2. Deliver me speedily. God is a God of speed. At times, some things have happened so slowly, you think it is normal. Uh -huh. According to Romans 9 28, he said, A quick walk. That was a quick walk. Say, Quick walk. What is going to take you 14 days? He wants to do it in 14 hours. The Bible says, he cuts it short in righteousness. But you have to be more. 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 That is where the rubber meets the road. He wants to do things faster. He wants to do things faster. But he needs your cooperation. He needs your participation. He needs your involvement. He is fast by nature. The reason why he is slow is because people are not open. You are not receptive. You do not participate. You do not show up. 
after this conference, things will become faster. Things will be quicker. In the name of Jesus. Listen, you will know God as a fast God. When you tell people you are led to use God's method, they say, ah, that will be slow. But it's because you don't know God. God by nature is not slow. The Bible tells us he's a God of haste. Psalm 22 verse 19. Psalm 38 verse 22. Psalm 40 verse 13. Psalm 70 verse 1. Psalm 70 verse 5. Psalm 71 verse 21. He said, make haste, O oh God. God is a God of haste. Isaiah 60, 22, he said the Lord will hasten it in its time. Jeremiah 1, 12, he said he watches over it to make, uh, he, he will, God said I watch over it to hasten it. You will receive divine acceleration. Your speed will be faster. You will experience God on the fast side. You will not wait for God anymore. God will be the one waiting for you. Listen to this. Isaiah 65, 24. Before you call, I have answered. Why are you speaking? I have heard. I call it Operation Cash. C-A-S-H. Before you call, it's not a C. I have answered. A. Before you speak, S. I have heard. H. You will experience God in that dimension. You will feel him in that way. If you can only become more The place where I come from, we speak a language known as Yoruba. And in Yoruba language, it says, it is always easy for you to carry a baby whose hands are open. If the baby's hand is open, carrying the baby to any level is easy. But if the baby's hand is not open, you can carry the baby. But the risk of falling will be increased. Look at your neighbor and say, be open. Tap your chest and say, I will be open. I will be more open. The journey of 40 years wouldn't have been for Israel. The journey was supposed to be 21 days. But you are not open. You are not open. You are not open. For as long as we are not as open as we should be, we will struggle. It's not God. It's not something that has to do with God. It's not his weakness. It's not his inability. It's not a change of mind. It's not because he's unwilling. But we are not open. He wants to do things at a faster rate. Faster rate. In the Bible, you know what I saw? <laughs> Let me show you this. Jesus Christ came to, when he died, he resurrected after three days. Then he was among his people for 40 days. Then he after he was around this for 40 days, then he ascended to heaven. And then after 10 days, he sent the Holy Spirit. So the, for the first time, the Holy Spirit came to the apostles after 10 days that Jesus left. Then again, you go to Acts chapter 9. You see the Holy Spirit coming on a group of people. I mean, you see the Holy Spirit coming on a man known as Apostle Paul. It came after three days. In Acts 2, it came, the Holy Spirit came after 10 days. In Acts 9, 9, 9, 9, 19, the Holy Spirit came after 3 days. But in Acts 10, 44, the Bible says, While Peter yet spake the word, the Holy Spirit fell. That is to let you know that he wants to do something faster. From day 1, God wants to do it now. Isaiah 58, verse 9. Say, you will call upon me and I will answer you. You will cry unto me and I will say, Here am I. God is not in charge of keeping things back from his own people. Psalm 68, verse 19. He daily loads out with benefits. When the word goes out of his hand, out in righteousness, he said, There shall be a performance. But why this? You have to be more open. Look at your neighbor and say, be open. Be open. Say it again, be open. be open. I was ministering to a Muslim man who happened to be the husband of one of our deacons. I was leading him to Christ to be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
And I was talking to him about what was going to happen when I was going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. This is what you do. This the man said, You mean I would just raise up my hand like this and begin to say, Broke up, I can't be about that. What did you think it happened like that? It was open. Look at your and say, Be open. Many times we are not open, we are closed. We are tied up. We are we are closed. We are not as open. And so God can do things faster. He wants to do new things. He wants to do more things. And he wants to do things at a faster rate. You will receive accelerated hearing before the throne of God. That thing will be performed quicker than usual. Your application will be responded to fast. When I was going to come on this trip, I had to apply for a visa of another country. And the man looked at me and said, it takes 10 days to process the visa. 10 working days. That's two weeks of waiting on the line. By the fifth day, I sent my man back to the office. I said, go and collect my passport. The visa should be ready. When he got there, they told him. They say it cannot be ready for another week. I said, tell them that I am traveling and I need my passport now. They went back there and they said, no, we are going to process it. They said the same thing they said the first time. I said, you tell them that I have another assignment. Give me the visa now or give me my passport. When they went back and told the superior visa, he said, that must be that reverend. You will be noted for good. You will be noted for no nonsense. You will be noted for deliverance. You'll be noted for elevation. You'll be noted for a change. He said, that must be that reverend. He said, tell him to come back by 3 o'clock. He said, but we have never done it like this. They will do it for you. They will suspend their law. They will suspend their policy. They will suspend what they said they will do. And they will do it for you. Your name has come up. Your face has come up. Your situation has come up. Speedy answers. Speedy answers, unusual quickness, unusual hastiness, in the name of Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, unusual. First Samuel 21 verse 8, he says, the king's business require haste. The king's business require haste. Number four, God does not just want to do new things, more things. Things at the faster rate, God, the Holy Spirit, wants to do better things. I would say better. Better things. But you need to be more open. He wants to do better things. Under the Old Testament, the Spirit of God will come on people. Under the New Testament, the Spirit of God came to be with us and in us. Better things. I like that song we sing in Nigeria. We are together again. Just praising the Lord. We are together again. In one accord. Something good has already happened. Something better is in store. We are together. After this conference, better things will happen. In your finance, in this church, in your marriage, in your coming in, in your going out, in your labor, in your basket, wherever you turn. Eggs. We are under a better covenant based on better promise. I'm talking about what the spirit wants to do, but you need to be more. That is what I'm emphasizing this one. You need to be more open. He can do better things. He is willing to do better things. He has provision to do better things. But we are not open. We are not open. We are not open to the extent to which we allow him. Raise up your hand and say, I allow you, Father, by your Holy Spirit, to do better things. The enemy of better is good. What has kept better back from you is that you have held on to good. The good is good. 
But the better is better than the good. We thank God for the good old ways, but we better we thank God for the better new ways of doing good old things. The reason with the, the problem with the children of Israel today is that they believe the old is better. Christ has already come. He has already died, but they are still holding on to Judaism. Judaism is a good religion, but a bad way of life. It's a very expensive way of life to be killing goats consistently. You have a baby, you kill a goat. You want to clean your house, you kill a goat. When the, when the Passover lamb has been slain for us, John 1, 29, Behold the lamp of God that taketh away the sins of the world. You always want to do something better. Hebrews 10, verse 7 and 9. He said, Lord, I come as a sinner in the volume of the books to do your will, O God. He taketh away the first, verse 9, that he may establish the second. The second is better than the first. The Holy Spirit wants to do better things. Raise up your hand and say, Holy Spirit, go ahead. Say it, say, Holy Spirit, go ahead. Say, Holy Spirit, go ahead. Many times you and I are the people standing in the way of him. He wants to do something better. I told you the testimony of how I lived in one house for 13 years. A good house. Five bedroom house. Beautiful house. For the whole 13 years when I lived there, the landlord never increased the rent for once. He respected me and honored me. He did not come there once to make noise. But you see, I was so happy with the good. I didn't know there was something better. So the day came when the landlord sold the landlord sold the building. And God wanted me to have, he wanted me to stop being a tenant and become my own landlord. But I could not see it. May your eyes see the better things. May your eyes see the better things. One of the undue fears people have is if I lose this, will I get something else? Something better. That is the purpose behind giving. If you give, it will be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and there is something better, something higher, something greater than what you are holding on to. God is a God of quality. He wants to do better things. I didn't know God wanted to take the five bedroom away because he had a mind to give me an eight bedroom mansion and suit. The other five bedroom were not in suit. But I, I was happy with it. I couldn't see far. May you see far today. May you hear clearly today. May you walk surely today. The Holy Spirit, the administrator, the executor, the distributor of the things of God wants to do better. The children chapter 8 verse 6 said, he will do us better in our latter end. The children of Israel wanted to stay in Egypt. They did not know there was a land that flowed with milk and honey. They wanted to go back to Egypt. Numbers 11 verse 4. The Bible said, the mixed multitude fell and lost him. And they said, we remember Egypt. Where we used to eat cucumber. We used to eat rice. We used to eat the leeks. They did not know that the land which they go in is better than the land of Egypt. May God give you perception. May God give you understanding. That's what the psalmist says in Proverbs chapter 9 verse 6. He said, forsake fools and leave go in the way of understanding. First Corinthians 14 20. He said, in children, the malice in understanding be man. First John 5 20. The Son of God has come and has given us an understanding. After this conference, better things will take over. Better jobs. Better relationship. Better houses. Better vision. Better strength. In the name of Jesus. Your good will get better, your better will get better still. He wants to do better things. But you need to be more. The key that unlocks the treasure house of the next level, you need to be more open. I did not understand God then. When the man came and was angry with me, I wanted to bulldoze down the house, I ran inside. I said, oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek thee. My voice shall not hear in the morning. In the morning, oh Lord, will I direct my prayer unto thee and look up. God said, pack your bag and baggages. And leave the house. 
Let me say this to you. What is happening to you, you think is for your worst, but it's not. Romans 8, 18. For we record that the sufferings of these present times are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. After this pain, pleasure will come. After this cry, joy will come. After this sweat, sweet will come. Raise up your hand and say, something better, oh Lord. Say it again. Something better, oh Lord. The senior brothers of Joseph sold him into slavery. Joseph will have felt bad. At times, some things will get worse before they get better. They sold him into slavery. That was bad enough. He became a houseboy. Terrible. And from that place, they took him to a secure hostel. Otherwise known as prison. But from the prison, where did they come? To the palace. From the pit, P-I-T, prophet in training. To Potiphar's house. From Potiphar's house to prison. But from prison to palace. Something is about to change. Something better has come. Something better is taking over. Something better is stepping in. Receive the anointing for that. This wind of change has come to make things better. To make better things. You will see better. You will hear better. The pain you are going through is making you a better person. At times, there are many assumptions we have in life that the things we go through help us to become better focused. At times, of course, we don't appreciate sleep until you have weight low. When you have weight low, then you know the value of sleep. Hallelujah. Something better by the Holy Spirit. Something better by God. Something better in God. Receive it. Receive it by the anointing. Receive it by fire. Receive it by grace. Receive it by promotion. Receive it by deliverance. Receive it. The Holy Spirit wanted to have new things. Wanted to have more things. Wanted to have things faster. Wanted to have be seated. Number five. Is it number five? The Holy Spirit also wants to do a variety of things. Monotony is very uncomfortable. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of variety. 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 There are gifts of the Spirit. There are nine expressions of the grace of the Spirit, of the fruit of the Spirit. There are diversities of operation. There are differences of administration. God and the Holy Spirit want to do variety. When I go into a service in churches and it's the same thing that is done, the same thing of the same thing is uncomfortable. But variety is good, attractive. I tell my wife, variety of hair designs. Some of us sisters, every time your hair is looking in the same direction, the man needs variety. Variety of dresses is the same skirt and blouse, black, that you're always wearing. Variety. Ever say variety. At times, let your hair point up. At times, let it point back. At times, to the right. At times, to the left. At times, poop, poop. Skirt and blouse, trouser, jeans, variety. When the true spirit of God begins to move, there'll be variety. You will see some people crying and you see some people laughing. The same spirit. You see some people dancing. You see some people standing. You see some people sitting. You see some people lying down. You see some people jumping. It's the same spirit. Variety. I like it when it's variety. Not tautologously monotonous. Something, something that is like unusual. When my wife wears the same clothes, day after day, I say, go and change. 
I want to see something. Variety. Holy Spirit is the spirit of variety. Variety. Recently, the spirit of God was dealing with me and was saying, listen to me. I want to do things in a variety of ways. I went to a place to preach one day. Normally, after we preach, that's when we take offering. After we preach, that's when we take, uh, we, we take altar call. I went there. I said, okay, I'm going to preach there. Give altar call. God said, no. Give altar call first. I said, ah. That's not the way we do it. He said, I am a different. I, I do it in a different way this time. That was a variety. From today, you will experience variety in this house. Variety in this house. Your services will not be the same. Your meetings will not be the same. Become more open. Well, at times, you make some people, some you, you offend some people's sensibility. Because you did. I remember we had a church, we had a service some years ago. And I said, at the end, we are not going to share the grace. Let's go. And one man came to me and said, that's a very bad thing you have done. I said, well, I said, you did not finish the service. I said, why? He said, we did not share the grace. I said, show me the grace sharing in the Bible. Services are going to be different from today. The way you are going to get you will be different from today. There will be no monotony anymore. Monotony makes people uncomfortable. It's not a fact. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That's why I like the way the pastor was dancing. Variety. I saw the way those young boys came and rap. Variety. Look at your neighbor and say, Be open. Look, if you are not open, you will miss out what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Variety. There are diversities of operation. There are differences of administration. Don't be offended because we did not do it today like we did it last year. This is Ephata. Ever say Ephata. Say variety. Something that is not according to custom and tradition. The church of God is not is not a refrigerator. The church of God is an incubator. If it's a refrigerator, we'll preserve it the way it was in the beginning. As it was in the beginning, so is it now. So forevermore. Look at your neighbor and say, when you see me next time, the frame to my glasses will have changed. Variety. Somebody, somebody saw me the way I was walking recently. He said, you have changed your walk. I said, yes. It's confidence. Variety of walking. Variety of walking. Variety of operation. Diversities of operation. Varieties of today. You will experience it. The Holy Spirit will make it possible. The Holy Spirit will release it to your life. The Holy Spirit will release it to your finance. Variety. The same thing, the same thing is uncomfortable. When I woke up this morning and they brought the vehicle to me, I've been sitting at the back seat all through the week. So I sat in the front. And my executive assistant said, What? Is that where you sit? I said, Yes. He said, Why? I said, That's my choice. That's what I want. Variety of seating positions. There are some of us, our mentalities, when you come to the church, you always sit behind that pillar. You are going straight to the pillar. Look at your neighbor and say variety. Let's do something. Let's do something. Let's do something. The person sitting near you, move to their seat. You move to their seat quickly. Variety. 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 Move to somebody else's say, huh? Uh-huh. Everybody say variety. Pastor Shola, God said, I should tell you that if you fertilize your mind with creative ideas, with thoughts, you will see things, you will hear things and bring them to prayer in this ministry, in this work that will attract people from far, from near and release a new grace upon this house in the name of Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, be more open. I know your choir likes skirt and blouse. Trouser, wear boo boo, boo boo. The next one, boo boo. Dress like Ghanaians. Dress like people from South, South Nigeria. I come and sing. Where people, you see, something different always attracts attention. 
How many of you like the seat where you are sitting now? You want to go back to your seat? You want to go back to your seat? You are understanding me now. At times, we have become so addicted to a particular way that God is finding it difficult to move forward with us. We hold on to it like monkeys, not only with our hand but with our feet. We just hold on. God is saying there shall be differences. Different things will happen. God will not come out the way He has always come out. He will come out in a variety of ways. I went to a program once. The Holy Spirit was moving, and there are people saluting at it. When I saw it, I'd never seen that before. I was in the church in the United States. The power of God hit the church. The man who was the usher, who was standing, he just dived on the ass. He swam to the back on the ground. He turned at the back. He swam to the front and he stood still. <laughs> so I asked him, I said, what happened? He said, I didn't even know I went anywhere. <laughs> as far as he was concerned, he was still on the same spot. We see there one minute. What the Holy Spirit wants to do. I've given you five. Number six. Another thing the Holy Spirit wants to do, he wants to do what will last. Something permanent. I like that song. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What the Lord has done for me. It shall be What this window of change will achieve. It will be permanent in your life. The victories that have been won shall be permanent. The change that have been wrought shall be permanent. The transformation that has happened shall be permanent. The Holy Spirit wants to do things that will abide. That will last. John 15, 16, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And about then that you go forth and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit may abide. Something permanent. Not a flash in the pan. Not a one-hit wonder. But something grounded. Something rooted. Something built up. What you have gained, you will not lose. What you possess, you will not lose. What has happened will not unhappen. Your joy will not change to regret. Your deliverance will not change to redemonization. It shall be from today. When you have children, they will not die. When you celebrate something, you will not cry about it. The Lord will make it permanent. The Lord will make it consistent. The Lord will make it permanent. One of the problems is that some people, when they gain heat from God, they lose their heat. They become fervent. Then they begin to look back. Right? You will remain fervent. You will remain fervent. God will give you abiding results. Enduring results. In the name of Jesus. Enduring results. Those who are waiting for you to come down from where God has taken you to, will have to wait forever. You are not going to diminish. You will not be distributed. You will not be disgraced. You will not be pulled down. You will not be cut off. Receive the anointing to make it so. Your greatness, nobody will think of it. Your achievement will not be lost. What you have done and you have become, you will not unbecome it. Better, better will you get. Stronger, stronger will you get. Greater, greater will you get. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. The work of God will not spoil in your heart. It is not when it's your turn that it will fail. It is not when it's your time that it will fail. It will not fail in your time. It will not fail in your turn. You will not lose out. You will not be rejected. You will not be thrown out of the way. God wants to do something. Paul. Raise up your hand and say, I receive permanence in what he does. Say, I receive permanence in what he does. Say, I receive permanence in what he does. Nobody in this church will lose their pregnancy anymore. You will not cast your young. You will not lose your consistency. You will not lose your beauty. Accident will not make you walk a different way. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. You will not lose your husband. You will not lose your wife. Your love will not walk away. Your joy will not diminish. 
You will not lose your peace. You will not lose your gladness. You will not lose your favor. Your favor shall remain. On that job, your favor shall remain. On that job, your favor shall remain. The favor you have with God will remain. You will not be rejected like Solomon. You will not be rejected like Samson. Your favor shall continue. The miracle that got you to where you are will continue. The miracle that brought you where you are will continue. Receive the anointing to be so. Becoming more. All of these things are there. If we are open, we'll see the effect of them. But from today, let me prophesy to you. It is permanent. You don't need to be afraid that you lose it. You don't lose it. Hold it fast. Hold fast to what you have. No man will take your crown. No man. My sister, hear me. There are two women here who are consistently afraid that another woman will take your place. We ensure your position today. Your position is insured. Your place is guaranteed. In the kingdom of God, your place is guaranteed. No man will steal it. No man can take it. No woman will steal it. No man can take it. The place you are in the mind of God, nobody can replace you. The place you are in the mind of those who love you, nobody can take it. Some people are bothered with insecurity. Ah, this my manager will still like me. This my husband, this my wife. This is my father, this is my mother. Receive it today. It is permanent in Jesus' name. The winds of change have come. No more insecurity. No more weakness. No more feebleness. No more failure. No more lack. In the name of Jesus. This is a different year. This year is a different year. Your position will be consistent. Your job will be consistent. It shall be permanent. Look at your neighbor and say, it is permanent already. Say, it is permanent already. Do like this. No shaking. The Bible says the thing that can be shaken will be shaken. But the thing that cannot be shaken will remain. Say, no shaking. Whatsoever the Lord will shall be for shall be for say this with me it is the lord's dream and it's forever it is the lord's dream and it is permanent and it is permanent it is permanent it is permanent in the name of jesus don't feel insecure never feel insecure anymore the winds of change happen this year to establish you listen Listen, God has established you in this land. I didn't hear it properly. I didn't hear it. Your area is weak. God has established you in this land. God has established you in this land. They will not repossess your house. God has established you in that house. Nobody will shake you away from your ministry. God has established you in that ministry. You are steadfast, unmovable. Look at your neighbor said, you are unmovable. Always abiding. Always abiding. Always abounding. It is permanent. Be seated for a minute. What am I saying? These are the things the Holy Spirit wants to do. If only you and I will be more, 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 more open to do what to receive his ministry to receive his impartation i want to get you to a place this morning where your heart will be open bagada. just like god says be open your heart just open look at your neighbor's heart heart area say be open bagada shows me If only we can be more open. God is not prodigal with his power. He's not prodigal with his presence. He's not prodigal with his grace. He's not prodigal with his with the things that belong to him. James 1 5. 
He said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, I'll give it to men liberally. But no matter how liberal God gives it, if we are not open, it will not enter. Number seven. God wants to do things regularly. The Holy Spirit wants to do things regularly. Consistently. At times, the Holy Spirit is able to touch some people just once in a while. Because they are not open. Many times, we are not open most of the time. But God, the Holy Spirit wants to do things regularly, constantly, consistently. He, did not, he doesn't want to do it once in a while. Uh -huh. We are two or three are gathered in my name. There am I. First Corinthians 12, 7. He said the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit. God wants to do things regularly. When you wake up like this, he wants to speak to you. When you come out of your house, he wants to lead you. When you, when you need instruction, he wants to speak to you. Consistently, regularly, constantly, without abating. Now, I've said all of these to you to let you know that what your own part is, is to be more open. I wanted to listen to me as I tie this message up here. The Holy Spirit wants to do new things. The Holy Spirit wants to do more things. The Holy Spirit wants to do things at a faster rate. The Holy Spirit wants to do better things. The Holy Spirit wants to do a variety of things. The Holy Spirit wants to do things regularly and consistently. And the Holy Spirit wants to do things that will abide. Now in all of these areas, in what area of our lives does the Holy Spirit wants to walk? I want to give you five areas of your life that the Holy Spirit wants to walk. If you are going to be more open. I'm going to speak about what you need to do to be more open. What areas of my life does the Holy Spirit wants to walk in? What area? Number one, he wants to walk inside you. Inside. That's why the songwriter says, do something new. And he wants to walk inside you. There are some castles he wants to build inside you. Romans 8, 11. If the spirit of him that raised up Christ for the red dwelleth in you, dwelleth in you, then that same spirit will quicken your mortal flesh. He wants to walk inside you. I like that song that says, Jesus on the inside, walking on the outside, but he's inside. Ephesians 3.20 is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. According to the power that worketh, we are he wants to do something inside. Philippians 1 6. I'm confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you. There are some sicknesses inside us that medicine cannot locate. There are some conditions that have no medical terminology. There was a man who was sick some time ago. They took us to him. And when I got to the man, the man will swallow tablets like this. And it will come out the way he swallowed it. Inside him I've completely been eaten up. There are people who are walking around like this. But inside them there is nothing again. It has been eaten up. Sorrow has pierced their soul. Discouragement, depression, anxiety, worry, concerns. Have eaten them up. But one area where the Holy Spirit can walk is inside. Philippians 2.13 God is at work in me, both to will and do of his good pleasure. Second Corinthians 4 16. He said, Though the outward man perish, he said, For this cause we faint not. Though the outward man perish, the inward man is renewed. I remember the woman. This woman said to me, No matter how she brushes her tongue or brush her mouth or brush, what a thick smell of decay is always coming from inside her. From our gods. Medically, they did not hold, they could not explain it until we told the Holy Spirit to walk inside her. A man had a sick condition, stomach ache that has refused to go for years. No x ray revealed it. One day, I just felt like saying, Let whatever is inside you come up and come out. I was doing deliverance for him. As I said that, the horn, this size, the tip 
of the antelope's horn came right out of his mouth. He spat it out. That tip of the antelope's horn was filled with soap, soda soap, and also a stone followed it out. And that was the end of stomach ache. Put your hand across your belly and said, Holy Spirit, walk inside me. Go ahead and say it again. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. You see the effect now? That's what he wants to do. Simple. When you are open, open, he will go to work. A man told me something is walking around in his head, walks in his hand. Walk in his leg. The thing just keeps walking around. I told them that I said, put your hand on your belly. I said, Holy Spirit, walk inside me. Let's say it one more time. Holy Spirit, walk inside. One more time. One more time. One more time. The things that defile a man are the things that come out of that man. How the, where does it come from? Inside. Listen, the heart of man is deep and desperately wicked. Do you know something? In the heart of many people, there are wickedness laid up that only come out. Man? Man is a difficult being. Man? Inside. That is one area where he walks. I speak this morning, the axe is laid to the root of every tree. Every tree inside you, my father has not planted. Be uprooted! I say be uprooted! I say be uprooted! I say be uprooted! I say be uprooted! We are ministering to a woman that had problem with having a baby. We minister to her. This woman gave a wonderful testimony. After we administered to her, when she was having an expenses, cowrie shells with small, small, old ancient money came out while she was menstruating. I set fire to every chaff inside. I address every root of bitterness, every root of jealousy, every root of envy. I address that power. I spread that force. I spread that spirit. Out in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. I say out. I say out. I say out. You know those wicked thoughts? Wicked thoughts. Jeremiah 414. Is it why go and set about? For how long will these vain thoughts dwell inside you? That is one area. Walks inside. Inside. That is why the psalmist says, Search me and know my heart. Try me and know my heart. If there is any wicked way in me. The first place we had God walked in you was inside you. He took the stony heart out of your flesh and gave you a new heart and put his spirit within you. Ezekiel 36, 26. Ezekiel 11, 19. He took that stony heart out. When they say somebody is stubborn, he's inside. He's inside. When they say he's bad, he's inside. Put your hand on you. I say from today, no darkness shall survive inside me. No darkness shall survive inside me. Every bitterness, every hatred, every wickedness, every contrary force, out! 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 The wind of change is blowing. Inside you, the foundation of a new building of grace is being laid. The foundation of a better marriage. The foundation of a better person. The first thing God changed inside you was inside you. We are for if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things pass. Behold, all things become new. The first area is inside you. Becoming more open. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, I'm open. Do your work. 
inside me. Do your work inside me. Perfect your work inside me. Finalize your work inside me. Whatever is an obstruction to your progress that is inside you, in whatever form or shape in which it exists, I command it to leave you alone. The things that define a man are inside. They come out. The things that define a man. Number two area where the Holy Spirit wants to walk is on you. Not just inside. On you. I know people go through what they call cosmetic surgery. But do you know that is a way in which God can cosmetically uh, carry out the surgery on you? On your looks. On the frame of your body. God can work on us. Working on us. Not just working on us. Working on us. A woman told me this. She said I have this body odor. Terrible body odor. She said I can bath. I can use the best perfume. Strong. He said but immediately I go among people. The smell is sent out. It's not the natural smell. At times the devil brandish people like this. You won't see it physically. But wherever you go, whenever you get there, it will not like you. The wind of change is blowing. God will walk on you. God will walk on you. He will walk over you. He will lay a new hand on you. As what anybody who sees you will accept you. Do you know there are some people, people don't just like them. You have not said anything. You have not done anything. But just looking at you. you say, eh, eh. The Bible says this. It was Paul who said it. Galatians 6.17. He said, Henceforth, let no man trouble me. For I bear on my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. We put that mark on you. In the last days, the mark of the beast shall be put on people. What I'm saying today, the mark of favor is on your life. The mark of standing out is on your life. You will stand out. You will be outstanding. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hand and say, God, walk on me. Walk on me now. Walk on my looks. Walk on my shape. Walk on my appearance. Walk on me, oh God. Let me say this. I've been in the occult. It is not the way people look in the natural that they look in the spiritual. <laughs> I have seen people literally who physically are walking on their feet, but spiritually they are actually standing on their heads. I was in Kroger stores in the United States in Atlanta. I was buying something in the store. All of a sudden, a woman came from outside. When she was coming, she was looking up like this. Looking up, looking up, looking up, looking up. I said, it stood in front of me. I said, what happened? She said, I was outside. And I saw a powerful light shining from inside the store. He said, I follow the light. The light is on you. He said, the light I follow. I saw it outside. So I followed it. And the light is on you. From today, you will arise and shine. Your light has come. The glory of God is upon you. Darkness may cover the world, darkness the people, but you will rise and shine in your life. Tap your chest and say, The glory of God is on me. The heaven is open over me. The hand of God is on me. The strength of God is on me. The marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. God works on us. When God works on you, the same person who people resist, they welcome you. The stone with the builder reject will become the head of the corner. Let me say this to you. Many times people magnify our weaknesses and they downplay our strength. From today they will magnify your strength and play down your weaknesses. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. From today your garment is fresh. Zechariah 3 1. 
The Bible says Zechariah the high priest stood before God. But Satan was on his right hand to resist him. Why? He had only filthy garment. Every filthy garment you have. Every garment of cost. Every garment of failure. Every garment of pain. Every garment of shame. Every garment of disgrace. Every garment of negativity. Be removed in the name of Jesus. Hold up. Listen. I have a prophetic word for you. God wants to put a new garment of Elijah on you. But you are still wearing the garment of Elisha. Which is a symbol of servitude. Hold that garment in the spirit. That negative garment. Now, tear it in Jesus' name. 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 Now, receive the mantle of light. Receive the mantle of light. Receive the mantle of power. Receive the mantle of joy. Receive the mantle of grace. Receive the mantle of glory. In the name of Jesus. He wants to walk on you. He wants to walk on you. I've seen people that did cosmetic surgery. After the cosmetic surgery, after a few months, they go back. Joyce Meyer did cosmetic surgery. Because she didn't like the way she looked. Of course, you can do it if you have the money. But after some time, the whole thing is beginning to appear again. But from today, nobody will see those negative things. They will not see those wrinkles. They will not see those spots. They will not see those blemishes. Let me say this to you. Let me give you a good example. A young man went for an interview. Immediately he sat down like this. The interviewer says, you look somehow. He said, well, the presence of God, the angels of God were all about him. From today, wherever you go for favor, wherever you go seeking for something, the power of God will work on you. The grace of God will work on you. Esther, listen. Esther did not use the cosmetics that all the other contestants used. I hope you saw that. It's not the fingernail that make you look like a lion that will attract men. All those are superficial fakeness. You know the nails are not yours. In fact, women, we are afraid of those nails. The nails will not allow you to hold the spoon properly. All those fake enhancements, that's not the thing. Beauty is something God will put on you. Psalm 90 verse 17. He said, let the beauty of the Lord my God be upon it. May the beauty of God be on you. 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 I went to a church. The pastor's wife, very gifted. She's about four times the, the size of the pastor. And she's so big, gifted in front. Gifted behind. The back is so gifted that you can virtually sit on it. I am not make, I'm not exaggerating. I described the person to my wife. My wife thought I was playing. When she saw the person, she started singing. Rock of it, glad for me. Let me hide myself in. <laughs> Now, listen, but the day I got there, what he like challenged me most was the man was about to preach. He was about to welcome me. He went up to the pulpit. He said, I want to appreciate my wife today. The best thing that ever happened to me. I looked at the direction of what he was talking about. He said, oh, my honey, my darling, my sweetheart, the only mosquito in my net, the only somebody that comes to my house, my joy, my love. Oh, you have been, you have been so. And I, I just stood there, I was amazed. God said to me, He said, I can make somebody beautiful in your eyes. All that will be, from today, those who need to see your beauty will see it. They will see your beauty, they will see your attraction. They will see how you look. The way God wants them to sit. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hand. Say, God, walk on me. God, walk on me. Walk on me. Walk on me. Walk on me. 
after this window of change, God will deal with you. He will deal with you. I know women who have been so bad to their husbands, when God began to work on them, they began to melt like butter. I know men who dealt with their husband and their wives like slaves. When God started working on them, they started becoming the scriptural husband. If it's husband or wife, parent or friend or leader that God needs to work on, God will work on them. Put your hand, say, Holy Spirit, work on me. Say, Holy Spirit, work on me. Holy Spirit, work on me. Be seated one minute. There is a man, there was a man known as A.B. Simpson. He was pastor of a church, A.B. Simpson. This man pastor the church. He will preach on Sunday. And after Sunday sermon, he'll be so tired. His body will be so weak. His mind will be so weak. That he will not be able to begin to prepare for message again. Until Thursday. He had a very frail body. He had a very frail mind. He was infirm. He was commonly and quickly sick. Continuously, this man was going through that experience until one day he saw Romans 8 11. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwelleth in you, then that same spirit will quicken. Raise up your hand and say, Lord, quicken me. Listen, some of us have a problem with remembrance. When you read something you don't remember, say, quicken my brain. Some of you have a problem with communicating with your mouth. Say, Lord, quicken my mouth. Some of us have a problem with hearing the spirit. Say, Lord, quicken my hearing. Say, Lord, quicken my understanding. That is the third area, the second area. The third area. God works in us. God works on us. And God works for us. God works for us. Psalm 118 verse 6. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. I mean, Psalm 18 verse 6. God is on my side. I will not fear what God, what men will do unto me. Romans 8 that one. What then shall we say to this things? If God be for us, who shall be against us? Psalm 56 verse 9. This I know God is for me. Second Chronicles 16 verse 9. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro. To show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart he shows himself strong on the behalf. Everybody say behalf. Have you ever known when the Holy Spirit works for you? You are going to a place and you are thinking the stone will still be covering the mouth of the tomb. But when you get there, the stone is rolled away. God has worked for you. Where you cannot be and others are. And they are about to settle your case. God will work for you there. When they sit next time to determine what they will do to you, God will work for you there. What are you talking about, Brother George? God working for people by the Holy Spirit. A member of our church went for an interview. He sat down at the interview. They asked him five questions in all. Four questions. He answered straight. When they asked him the fifth question, it was the only question he did not have an answer to. As he was there, trying to bring an answer the head of the interview panel looked at the man who had this question he said how will you ask him that kind of a simple foolish question don't answer him Jerry. stand up and go that is god working for people the only question they asked him and he did not have an answer to was the one that the head of the interview panel said ah, ah, that question is too easy now we are we are satisfied four questions you have answered all 100 percent you can go now that is god working for people Wherever you need God to work for you, close your eyes and say, God, work for me there. You know the place? Say, God, work for me there. Say it. Say, God, work for me there. Say, God, work for me there. Say, God, work for me there. You know where there is? When the enemy will lift, when the enemy will come in like a flood, the Spirit of God will lift the standard. Royal connection, I prophesy. That where you are not present, where anything will be discussed about this ministry, about you and about any of your members, 
the Lord your God, the God of wind of change, will work for you there. He will show you favor there. He will fight for you there. You will not need to fight, you will fight for him. You will not need to struggle, you will struggle for him. You will not need to stretch out your hands. His hand is stretched out in the name of Jesus. Be seated. What I'm sharing with you today, just be more open. Be more. When you are more open, he will work for you in strange ways. Let me give you a good example. I told you about the man who came to my house and the house where I was living for 30 years and was bulldozing the building. That was in the year 2002. 2002. That is six years ago. Do you know what happened to the building that I moved out of? It is still unoccupied. They are now offering it for sale. The man chased me out. He gave someone 30 million. Please build so and so hotel for me. The first person they gave 30 million to delivered about four cheaper loads of, 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 of sand and absconded. The second person, they gave him 25 million. That one came and inspected the site. He did not even come back. 55 million naira lost on a building that he sent me out of because he wanted to build it in three months. This is six years after they have not been able to build it. Three people came to buy it. The testimony I had was when one of them entered into the place, he said, ah, there is a bad spirit in this place. And he rejected it. A second person came, he walked around. He said, ah, I perceived that there was a fight about this building. Those are spiritual people who have gone to the occult world to acquire power. See, I perceive. And recently, one of the lawyers who was in charge of that building said, Sir, will you buy it? The building I was changed out of. Who fought for me? God told you, sir. I, let me say something to somebody here right now. It's a woman and a man. You have been trying to fight your battles in your own wisdom. You have been trying to prevail by your strength. You have been trying to make it happen based on what you know. God says, hands off. Psalm 94 verse 1. Oh, that God, oh, that God of vengeance, manifest yourself. Oh, that God of vengeance, man. God says, don't touch it anymore. Just rejoice in the fact that it's safe in God's hand. In 2 Chronicles 20 verse 15, 2 Chronicles 20 verse 17, he said, the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. You have been trying to do it yourself. Uh -uh. Though we are in the flesh, we do not work on the flesh. The weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Don't avenge yourself. Don't try to do anything to hurt that person. When God shows up, he knows what to do with that person. Don't follow them out. That was the mistake Saul made. Saul was pursuing David. Uh -huh. David did not touch Saul. He said, God forbid that I stretch forth my hands to touch the Lord's anointed. Again and again, hear me today. The Lord will work for you. I say the Lord will work for you. Receive the anointing for God to work for you. The Lord will work for you. The Lord will work for you. The Lord will work for you. I said the Lord will work for you. The Lord will work for you. The Lord will work for you. It is not your battle. This beat is not your beat. This watch is not your watch. Allow God to come in. Too much of your flesh is involved in this process. Let God arise. Let his enemies. Psalm 68 verse 1. Let God arise. Let his enemy be scattered. What you are looking at is in the natural. Look in the spirit and you will see God is at work. They tried it before now but they failed. The trying they are doing now will not stop you either. They have used all they could in the spirit. They did not succeed. That's why they are coming to the body. But even in the natural they will be defeated. The way they were defeated in the spirit. Darkness is not going to cover your life. 
joy is your portion. Glory is your portion. Power is your portion. Receive the anointing for that. I said receive the anointing right now. Receive that anointing. Receive the measure of the spirit. Take it with you. Go with it. Walk with it. Operate with it. In the name of Jesus. Is there a place you want God to walk around? Is there a file you have pending? Is there a pending file? Is there a pending file? Is there a case you have in court? Is there a case that is coming up for mention before you come to a group of people? The Lord will work for you there. The Lord will work for you there. He is working on me. He is working in me. And he's working for me. But be more let him do it. Stand aside. Don't get in the way. Don't get in the way. Don't let by your thinking get in the way. Don't let by your speaking get in the way. Don't let by your desire get in the way. Lift up your hand and say, Father, I'm open. Walk for me, O oh God. Walk for me, O oh God. I will stop getting in the way. I will stop getting in the way. I will stop getting in the way. Your husband is a man. Your wife is a man. That man you are dealing with is a man. The heart of kings are in his hands. Proverbs 67. When a man's will please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be his well wishers. The same people who try to pull you down will celebrate you. Haman will soon lead your horse into Jerusalem. Haman tried to destroy Mordecai. When God fought for Mordecai, it was the same Haman who tried to destroy Mordecai that was used. God will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Don't bother yourself about that woman. And my husband is calling that woman. My husband is talking to that woman. Don't worry. The battle is not yours. Don't bother about what they are saying on the job. Your manager is putting so much heat on you. It is the manager who will go. It's not you. Did you hear me say that? The manager will leave because of you. It's Isaiah 43 verse 4. Since you are precious in my sight, you have been honorable. Therefore will I give men for you and people for your life. You're not the one who is going to go. You are not bound to go. The miracle who brought you, the miracle that brought you there is still there. Let me give you a good example. This happened to me in Nigeria. The church wanted to rent a house. Listen to this. I was telling my executive studies this story. The church wanted to rent a house. The owner of the building wanted to give the house to us. But there was a friend of the owner of the building who when he had his ever chapel that wants to own the house. He pursued the person. He pursued the person. He said, I don't do it. That church is a terrible church. For no reason. So the man was going on a journey from Ilone to, up to Kaduna. And he was sitting inside the vehicle. I'm telling you a story really that happened in Offa. Where I'm from. Our church in Offa wanted a building. And a man was standing against us like Elimas, also known as Bar Jesus, who was opposing the deputy. Offer. I'm telling you something that happened in my own hometown. Our church, Rema Chapel Offer. While they were going, this man was sitting in front. All of a sudden, when they are traveling about one and a half hours, the man was giving a dirty slap from the back. He, bum, ah. he looked around and said, Did you slap me? The man said, How can I slap you? Ah. He didn't slap me. So the journey continued. Two half hours into the journey, another slap from the back. He boom! Ah! Ah! Did you slap me? He looked back. How can I slap you? People ask me. He asked the people around, Did I slap anybody? They said, No, he was not slap. He was even dozing. <sighs> what is this now? Four hours into the journey, one and a half hours to where you are going, the third slap. The man did not even wait. He did not even ask him. He just slapped the man behind him. 
And when they slapped the man behind him, the driver was now trying to separate them with one hand. The vehicle entered into the ditch. The man broke both legs. They brought him back to Ilone. The body back to Ofa. It was in Ofa on his bed where the two legs were broken. Where God had fought for his people. That they sent the message to me in the Ilone. I said, Please come on. You need to come and pray for somebody here. The man now confessed that he was the one that was entering into the mind of the owner of the building that was making the owner of the building not to give it to us. But now he wants us to come and take the building and not pay for one year. Look at him and say, The Lord will fight for you. Say, The Lord will fight for you. The Lord will give people slap on your behalf. Some people are due for slap. That is slap. That is slap. Many people, many people try to kill their enemies. No, when your enemy dies, he cannot see you. He, he will not enjoy it. It's when it's alive and you are progressing and you are going forward and you get married and you have children. A committee of seven people sat in the church to invite me to come and preach. Look at your neighbor and say, This is my head. He's anointed. We sing a song in Nigeria. I'm sorry. Apology to those of you who are not here. Why not you speak it? Holy re re lo ri mi o o ri re re O ri re re lo ri mi o Mo ti ke ke re ma le o lu wa o Mo da gba la gba si nu i ma le A to ba ja ye lo lo O ri Ori re re lo ri mi o Your head is anointed. Your head is a strong head. The Lord your God will defend you. He will fight for you you hold your peace. He will stand on your behalf. He will show himself strong. But be more Allow God. Say, God, I'm open. Just do what you want. Let me close. So I'm going to have some time to minister. Have you gotten anything out of this one? Yes. Ephatha. Ephatha is not just be open the way, but you too be more open. Naaman, the captain of the host of Syria, will have lost his blessing if he was not open. Be open. God works on us. God works in us. God works for us. The remaining two is that God works through us. And God works among us. Royal connection. God will work among you this year. Your ten will become hundreds. Your hundred will become thousands. Your thousands will become millions. God will work among you. We are two or three are gathered together in his name. They are here in the midst of them. You will buy new houses. You will make fantastic progress. You will achieve new heights. You will succeed in what you do. The Lord will advertise you. The Lord will increase you. The Lord will expose you for beauty. You will not be exposed to ridicule. God will work among you. Friendship will develop. Relationship will be stronger. We will enjoy each other. When God sets you in a family like this, you need to enjoy your family. Nobody here needs to be lonely because you are not alone. Psalm 68 verse 6, he said, God set up the solitary in families. You are in a good family. God will walk among you. No one will die young. The, the young among us will be 100 years. No one will be brought to shame. No one will be a picture of police investigation. You will not be locked up. You will not be ridiculed. You will not be subverted. The Lord will walk among us. We will see eye to eye. We will find joy when we see each other. Your coming and my coming will be celebrated. You will find it a joyful thing to come to church. The Lord will walk among us. Everybody say, Lord, walk among us. Those who are among us, who are still doing jobs that they are higher than the Lord will take them higher. 
If there is a bot in your life, for whatever reason, God will send help. If there is a weakness and infirmity, God will send help. If there is something threatening your destiny and future, God will send help. We will have anything to celebrate with each other. The Bible says rejoice with them that rejoice. We will have reason to rejoice with each other more than more with each other. Your light will shine. Your glory will come out. Your greatness will come out. The Lord will supply your need. The Lord will remember you for good. The Lord will sustain you. The Lord will help you. The Lord will lift you high. You will eat it big this year. The Lord is working. You will eat it big this year. 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 Look at two people and say, You will eat it big. You will eat it big. And they say, I will eat it big. This year. This year is your defining year. Barriers will be broken. You will cross lines. You will exceed limit. You will bless a train. You will chart a cross. Hallelujah! Receive a new anointing for your life. Receive a new anointing for your future. Receive a new anointing for your joy. An anointing that brings joy. That brings strength. That brings glory. That brings honor. Receive the anointing. Your life will not be stagnant. God will walk among us. Listen. I can hear the step of God walking among us. I can hear his step walking among us. I can hear his step walking among us. I can hear his step. You will be proud. You live and operate here in connection point. You will never be ashamed of this church. You will not be ashamed of your pastor. Of your pastor's wife. Out of your ministers. You will be happy. You belong to royal connection. God will work among you. God has already promoted this church. Among other churches. But God will lift you very high. Let me say this. While I was praying this morning. God said to me. He said no one will compare this church to another church. He said, he said people that will compare this church. We compare this church to its destiny. Yeah. Our destiny is what God will compare us to. We are, we are the best thing that ever happened. As far as our destiny, God will compare us to our destiny. But look at him and say, be more open. Sit down. Let me tell you what to do. And then we close. I'll minister for a few minutes. But this is the direction God has led me today. Now listen. If you are going to be open, I will give you four things you need to do. Number one, the word open actually, or the word, uh, the word open, which is the same thing as the word expect. Because we read that scripture, Proverbs 23, 18. It says, surely there is an end and your expectation you know, this church is an expectation become what? But you know, your expectation can be weak. And so your manifestation can be delayed. Or your manifestation can be incomplete. It may not even occur. The word expect is one word that is used to describe a pregnant woman. An expectant mother. One thing about an expectant mother the first thing you need to know about the respect is that she's looking forward to. That is what it means to be expectant. You have to be open. You have to look forward to. The word expect also means to look out for. To be all eyes. To be open. You are expectant. Like that man in Acts chapter 3 verse 4. The Bible says she looked to Peter and John expecting to receive something. So if I'm going to be expectant or if I'm going to be open, what's the first thing to do? The first thing to do is that you have to be more focused on God. You are concerned too much about many things around you. Focus is one thing that you and I need to develop. We need to develop the power of focus. 
One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. If you are going to be more open, just focus on God. I have said the Lord before me, is on my right hand. Therefore, don't look at the mountain, don't look at Satan, don't look at people, don't look at yourself. Just look. Psalm 25, verse 15. My eyes is ever towards the Lord and he will take my feet out of the net. Psalm 34, verse 5. We looked up to him and we were lighted. Our countenances were not ashamed. Isaiah 45, 22. Look unto me and be saved all the end of the earth. For I'm God and there is none beside me. Psalm 145, verse 15. The eyes of God all waited upon you, God, and thou gavest them their meat in due season. If there is going to be, if you are going to be more open, just keep looking at God. Take your eyes, your eyes from the multitude. Take your eyes away from what you are going through. Take away your eyes from your pain, from your defeats, from the people who are condemning you. Just focus. When you focus well enough, you soon become the focus. Stay on course. Just keep looking. When my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord. That's what Jonah said inside the belly of the fish. There was no place Jonah could look at except up. Look at your neighbor and say, keep looking up. That's how to stay open. If you are going to stay open to God, you keep looking around. If you look at people, it will, when they say something, it will close the part of you. If you look at your ability, it will close the part of you. But when you are looking up, Stephen was being stoned in Acts 7. The Bible said he was stoned, called upon God. Then he looked up steadfastly into the heavens and saw the heavens open. And Jesus Christ standing. Do you know the more you look at something, the more you see in that thing? Most of the time, the reason why things don't open up is because we don't keep looking at it. James 1.25 Whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue the hearing, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the works, that man shall be blessed in his deeds. Focus. Don't worry about somebody talking. When somebody is running 100 meters and wants to break the world record, and someone standing by the road says, Look at his nose, as big as that, that of an, uh, as big as that of an elephant. Will you say, Ah, you are talking to me? When you say that, you distract yourself, you close up. Don't let people's condemnation bother you, and don't let people's commendation make your head swell. If people's commendation don't bother you, their condemnation will not move you. Focus. Stay on God. Isaiah 26, verse 3. And we keep them in perfect peace. Who's mine? Pastor and pastor's wife. I want to commend you to God. Whatever you hear as a commendation or a condemnation, just shake it off. Keep looking at God. He is the author and finisher of your faith. I have heard some things about myself that when I heard it, I said, ah, ah, these people are wonderful. They are experts. They just sit down and fabricate. Yesterday I heard someone say in Nigeria, on a point of authority, that Reverend George is now living in Canada. As, as my agenda said, on a point of authority. He said, quote me. And I've not been to Canada in the last four years. Will you allow that to move you? If I allow such things to bother me now, ah, it will close me up. To close my heart. To people, to close my heart to God. It will distract me. But I have said the law before Years ago, some people told them in our own church, people are ministering to and casting devils out of them. They said, I'm investing the money. And that when I go overseas and I say, I'm going overseas, what I do is carry the church offering. 
Which man? When I had that, you know, I was not mature. I cried. I just got it. <laughs> you are going to be commented upon by experts. People who stuck in trade is to sit down and fabricate. Come up with ideas, opinions. When you hear it, just rejoice. Because those who are doing things that are shaking the kingdom of darkness will always, the kingdom of darkness will always try to shake them. But when you want to be open, don't let that bother you. I remember one time they said, ah, I bought a car and I've gone to the jungle to hide it. What I heard, I laughed. I said, ah, their prayers are going to be hard on my behalf. But I will not hide a car in the jungle. No one can stop your progress if you don't stop. Your response and reaction to what they say is what will stop you. But no one has the power to stop you. Not even the devil. I'm pressing up the upward way. New heights I'm getting every day. From today I say receive the anointing that we elevate you. It is the people people see ahead of them that they criticize. If you are not ahead of them, you are behind them, they will see you. They won't take notice of you. And they will not say anything about you. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw men. The more you succeed, the more your example will be to other men in Jesus' name. Focus! Don't concern yourself with, they said, they said, they said. Whatever they said is either less by one word or added to by one word. Proverbs 35, every word of God is pure. Proverbs 36, add not to it lest he reprove you and you become a liar. Your destiny is greater than to be wallowing with contention. Don't enter into that. Focus! When you are working in church, some people will, because of jealousy, say all kinds of things about you. My executive assistant here has been the butt of many jokes. I think we dog. Just follow. He could, they will be calling you a dog behind. Because Caleb means dog. That's the meaning of Caleb. Caleb means dog. It is only dogs like Caleb that enter into the promised land. Those who are not dogs, where did they end up? Follow a man who is going somewhere. Hold the tail coat of a man who is going somewhere. Walk with a man who is going somewhere. For as long as he gets there, you too will get there. Adego is dog. You follow Adego as a dog, you sleep in the same hotel he's sleeping. You follow him as a dog, you drive the car, he's driving. You follow him as a dog, you enter the aircraft. But you refuse to be a dog, you stay back at home. You are destined for the top. You are destined for great things. Receive the anointing for it. Receive the anointing for it. Receive the anointing for it. But stay focused. Those who drove me years ago are outstanding ministries of men of God now. Every place I go, even back at home, those who drove me. My first driver was a church member. He now pastors a private church in Lagos. When I did my fifth year, he gave the testimony. He was sleeping on the rug in my house, in his room. His friends looked at him and said, you are, all, you are a fool, you are an idiot. Today he is really an idiot. <laughs> but the same people who said, you are, where are they? They are now coming to him to collect him out. God will raise you up. God will make you mighty. God will extend your border. God will increase you. Pastor here, God saved 1994. He was an usher for two years. 1996 he became a pastor. How many people here are more than two years in Christ? Who are still warming the bench? Did I hit you a low blow? That's the type of person I am. What I'm saying is that the wind of change must make you change. Your promotion has come. Your season is here. Your joy is here. Your strength is here. Your glory is here. Receive the anointing for promotion. Let me say this. Next year by this time, your promotion must have come. You cannot afford to continue where you have been. But be focused. You are a member of Royal Connection. Stop being a charismatic Christian. Cruising, surfing, surfing churches. You surf. Soft touches. W W W W Christ Chapel. W W W 
Jesus House, WWW, XYZ, WWW, King's House, w for God's sake. The tree that we grow must have its roots in the ground. Put your root inside the crown. Be focused. When you are focused, you are open. <laughs> because you know you are not going anywhere. You are where you belong. And the Lord God will exalt you in due time. Look at your neighbor and say, be focused. Say, be focused again. It's not going around that matters. This wind of change must bring change. And one area it must bring change is be focused. Be focused. Don't, don't, don't look for what is not lost. Isaiah 37, 31. Let the remnant of Zion take root downward and bear fruit. Where you are going is not far. It's where you are branching that makes it look like where you are going is far. You see that one minute that will close in a minute. Number two. If you are going to be open, be hungry. An hungry man's mouth is open. If you are hungry, you can eat anything. Some years ago, I was very hungry. I came into the house. There was this food that had been on the table for about, for about two days. I just entered in hunger. Hunger. I look at the food. Who wants this food? Oh? Nobody does. Who wants this food? Oh? Who wants this food? Oh? I opened the food. I ate it ah, completely. Licked my food. And then my stepmother came and said, What have you done? I said, I've just finished eating the food. He said, Oh, ha, ha. I said, What's wrong with the food? He says, It's been there for two days. I said, I did not know the difference. Everybody say hunger. Hunger is a very persuasive equipment. Blessed. Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst. After Every service is an important service to a hungry soul. Don't be too full and too fear that not to have a room for the next meal. The more hungry you are, the tastier the food is. When you eat with appetite, it's different from when you eat ritualistically. I opened my mouth. Psalm 119, verse 5, that one. I opened my mouth and I pant. For I love for thy commandments. Be hungry. Be hungry for the power of God. For six years, I would pace up and down the room of where I was living. I was saying, God, let your power fall. I need power. I need your virtue. I need your presence. I was hungry for power. I can remember the day, the time, the hour, the place. 24th day of September, 1984, when the Holy Spirit came into the room where I was and my life changed. You will seek for me and search for me and you will find me when you seek and search. Jeremiah 29, verse 12 and 13, with the whole of your heart. We are not hungry enough. So of us are just reclined and lying low. You say, well, Lord, if you want me to have it, you can bring it over here. Mm -mm. Elisha was hungry. Elisha followed. Elijah was going. Elisha was following. If you have a man of God like this in the house, a woman of God like this in the house, follow hard. Follow closely. Caleb and Joshua said, we wholly follow the Lord. Numbers 14 to 24. Numbers 32, 11. We wholly follow. You need to draw near to God so that you can feel the heat of his power. Draw near to God. This month we are fasting. Are you fasting? If I examine your stomach in the spiritual, will I see a debris of bread, rice, tea, juices, these things don't come the way you are behaving. You need to be open. Debris is leftovers. You see chicken running around in your stomach. A cow mowing this cow food inside your stomach. Well, you are supposed to be fasting. We should endeavor to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. 
the house of God must be attractive supremely. Psalm 122 verse 1. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. They need to be hungry. 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 You see people who are hungry, you see people who are, who are standing back. What you will eat will be based on your hunger. The more hungry you are, the better for you. Have a desire that is insatiable. Want to drink and keep drinking. Want to partake and keep partaking. Take your part. That is partaking. Take your part. Don't let Satan keep you behind the line. Every excuse you have been using, your ulcer always come during the fasting. And once the fasting is over, your ulcer goes. Why are you not fasting? About five years ago, I remember when I was in school. That thing. All those excuses. The Bible said, whosoever puts his hand on the plan, look back, is not fit. Just not to eat for 12 hours. That's not a serious matter. The body of man is created to be able to fast. The Bible did not say, if you fast, when you fast. Fasting helps to position you to partake of the best that God has to offer. The best example is being set by the 70-day seven seven fast. If you have not started, start tomorrow. You also will go. We have seen people, look, let me say this, so it's from years ago. Uh, one evening like that, I think in January 15th, we were fasting because in our church we fast every year 30 days. My children have been fasting since the age of eight. If my child is eight, he begins to fast. You have to fast now or else you will fast in the future. Why will you not fast in the future when you have problems? The pastor will recommend you need to fast. Too. Then you begin to do what you are not used to. That's when your eyes begin to talk. You are walking on the street, three people will appear. It's the same person. You don't know who is real. You'll be shaking the one that is not real. Say, how are you? Let me tell you, this girl's testimony. She had agreed as a young girl. She was going to die on that age. She had an agreement with hell. She was in your court. But on this particular occasion, she was fasting. We were in the church worshiping God and praising God. When the presence of God came down. You see when you are fasting. You are saying Lord I'm open. Let me have what you have for me. I desire it. Breaking barriers. Fasting breaks barriers. And let me say this to you. You need to break barriers in fasting. You have only fasted one day. Now go for three days. Break barriers. Some of us cannot fast beyond one day. Try three days. Some of you have tried three days. Go to seven days. Some of you have tried seven. Go to twenty-one. You won't die. You'll be stronger, you'll be better. When you fast in the natural, you see that your urine is always thick. The same way it is thick, eliminating wastage in your natural body. That is where your life also is cleansed by fasting in the spiritual. Look at your name and say, This year you will fast though. Be hungry. You are looking at someone who is hungry now. I read the Bible omnivorously. I eat the word. He insists that if you see my Bible, it's totally red. When you enter into the place where I operate out of, it's like a jungle of books. When I sleep, I call. The devil does not try not to make me sleep. Because if I don't sleep, I just carry the Bible. So you quickly sleep will just come. Look at your neighbor and say, get ready. ready. But be hungry. This year, don't let anything pass you by. Anything you are doing, enter with them. If they have a cup, a fata, you do buy your own. Where's my own? Put it down. A fata, a fata, a fata. Don't be a spectator. Be a participant. If you are paying tight, begin to pay your own too. If you are hearing, carry it, carry it, carry it. And you don't jump up to carry it, they put it on your head. Not be on your on your head. Get involved. You have been standing on the sideline for too long. Leave the sideline. Become a departmental member. Participate. When they are jumping, jump with them. Even if you don't know why they are jumping, you see them jumping. Jump first, and then say, "Why are we jumping?" Huh? <laughs> you understand where we are going this year? Barriers will be broken. 
barriers that have kept you out they will be broken barriers will be broken barriers to marriage barriers to progress barriers to greatness barriers to strength barriers to liberty barriers to success barriers to growth this year they will be broken you will not stand behind the wall of jericho you will enter into jericho look at your neighbor and say move forward say again move forward say to yourself i move forward one more. I'll give you. Let me just sit down. I'll close in one minute. This morning is an everlasting message. God told me exactly that's what I should do. The third thing we are going to do, if we are going to be open, obey simple instruction. Don't be too wise. Proverbs 3 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Peter had been fishing on the same lake for years. He had been catching fishes on the same point in the night. But one day he swept, he tried and caught. The problem of God is with obedience. To obey is better. Jesus came out of the carpenter's workshop. Out of carpenter's workshop. This man is a doctor. He can advise you though you are a lawyer. And when you take his advice, you succeed in law. A carpenter advised a fisherman. And the fisherman caught more fishes than he had ever caught in all his life. The boat he had been using for years began to sink. And it was a carpenter that gave him the... I tell people in the church, because I'm not a doctor, I can teach you and train you the principles that will make you succeed in your medical practice. Are you a doctor? I operate at a level that is higher than what you are talking about. This carpenter here is here. When the carpenter tells you, you fisherman, put your net on the right side of the boat. Logically, physically, naturally, materially, humanly, it is nothing. But I have toiled all night and caught. He said, but nevertheless, at your word, I will lay down. Obedience. A couple had no child. I told them to dance. One year later, they had twins. Am I a gynecologist? Am I an obstetrician? Am I a midwife? Am I a doctor? I am higher than all of that. A businessman came to me and said, I've, stopped, I've, I've locked my store in the last three months. I said, go and open it. Get a chair, sit down, table. Nobody's there. Don't sit down. I'm telling you what I'm going to happen. While he was there sitting, somebody was looking for a place. So he saw the man sitting on an empty table, on an empty chair. And he walked up and said, Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for someone. He said, What do you really want? He now described that the person he wanted exactly was the qualification of the man. The store was open. Nothing. He said, They told me there is a store here. He said, No. I'm the one. That's how he got employed. The man works today in Slumberger in Nigeria. By sitting down inside an MC shop. Are you hearing me? An instruction will come out from this pulpit. A prophecy will come out from this pulpit. Grab your own and put it in your pocket. There's a Yoruba song. I'm sorry, I'm, the Yoruba spirit is anointed me today. It goes like this Akumi no bossy. Kolo. How many of you have had the song before? In whose pocket is it? What I'm saying is that the prophecy of this year that barriers will be broken is your portion. It is your lot. But make sure to obedience. I'm going to tell you something to do this morning. Simple obedience. Simple. I was going to marry in 1984. Money finished. No money. Only 200 naira. I told God this 200 naira cannot pay for my marriage. I didn't have a suit, no shirt. My, my best man was worse off. He didn't have shoes, no shirt, 
No socks. I had socks. I told the Lord, I said, what do you want me to do? He said, take the remaining 200. Go to so-and-so church. Drop it there and come and stay home and wait for me. I dropped the money. Came back. I said, God, no. The date is fixed already. 10th of November. This is two weeks to the wedding. Talk. My brother called me from Ibadan. He said, yes, I know I'm going to contribute to your wedding. But it seems that God has been speaking to me. I said, what did he say? He said, I should give you 2,000. In 1984, 2,000 is like 2 million. That was how the wedding was done. Everybody was eating rice and eating meat and cutting cake. And they saw me in my wine jacket. They didn't know where it came from. Everybody say obedience. Yes. You're going to be obedient to God. When you become obedient, nothing will stop you. The prop, don't negotiate your obedience. The obedience should be without negotiation. Don't delay obedience. Don't be partial in your obedience. Be instant. Don't let your obedience be forced. Don't let God get you to obey based on the fact that he's forcing you. An anointing for prosperity is about to come on this church. Let me say this to you, Pastor Shola. After we went and we saw that place, I was praying. I said to God, you know, the man spoke to us on familiar figures. God said to me, say that anointing of prosperity is coming upon your connection. Will you be involved? Will you be involved? Receive the anointing to prosper. <laughs> An anointing of prosperity. From this place, people will be connected to high places. From this place, people will get jobs that are unusual. They will get openings that are peculiar. From this place. This year, what you will make in three months will be what you made in three years. <laughs> who are those who are going to enter into that anointing? With me, I will enter. I told God, I said, Why did you tell me that it's forever? Chapter 6, rural connection. And you are sending me. He said, A pipe that carries water to a place. He said, We'll drink water now. So, me, I'm going to partake. It's not only for I know I've delivered the water to real, but me, I'm the pipe. Me too, I will drink all. Receive your anointing to prosper. Receive your anointing to prosper. Receive your anointing to prosper. All of you are in businesses. The door is open to you. Connections are open unto you. Great connections are open to you. Today, this is what God will do. He will make you prosper. You will excel. You will stand out. You will be outstanding. All those seeds you sowed years ago that have not grown, the windows of heaven will open. The rain will fall upon it. And you will exchange prosperity. Some of you that have been owed money, they will pay up. Some of you will get money from unlikely sources. You will, you will prosper in uncommon ways. God will open unto you his good treasure. God says, I should tell you, you will never have lack to do whatever his will is all the time. You will never lack to do his will all the time. Once it's God's vision, it's done. Never be afraid to take that step of faith. You are going to take the step of faith to do something you have never done before. To go to a place you have never gone before. God will issue you challenges. They will bring businesses. Don't ever say with your mind, I don't have money. I don't have money. It's no excuse from today. Because God will provide. He's the owner of the gold and the silver and the cattle upon a thousand hills. The ground, the sand, your stones will become brass. Your brass will become silver. Your silver will become gold. Your gold will become down. The seal of the Lord of those who perform it. The best days of your life are ahead. No matter how good you are now, you haven't seen anything. No matter where you are now, you haven't seen anything. The God of grace will grace you with new things. This is the eighth annual. Is this the eighth annual wind of change? Tenth is a marking point. Ten is a strategic point. And the God of ten will make ten, ten, ten out of your one, one, ones. 
where we look far at when we started. We are in army camouflage, marching all over the building to where we are today in a beautiful facility. I remember it was a community center somewhere. And we had stove near the bus. We're looking, ooh, stove, hot stove. Today we are in a place where we can blow hot or blow cold. But we are not there yet. But this is the foundation of a greater future. This winds of change is the foundation of a greater future. And you are part of it. Your light has come. Your day has come. Your victory has come. You will move on. You will not stop. You will ascend. You will not drop. In the name of Jesus. Be hungry. Be focused. And be obedient. And then number four. Be expectant all the time. Everybody say I'm expectant. Please, as you live here this morning, expect a text. Expect a phone call. Expect an interview letter. Expect a promotion. Everybody say expect. Say expect. What means your eyes must always be looking out. A woman who is pregnant, when she goes, gets to EGT, she's expectant. When you say, eh, eh, my sister, eh, will I see you next? You say, I don't know. I'm expecting, you know, it could be any time from now. Look at your neighbor and say, it could be any time from now. <laughs> say it one more time. <laughs> you are not saying like you are bold about it. <laughs> say it one more time. <laughs> that thing could be any time from now. It could be any second from now. It could be any minute from now. Expect! At the beginning of this year, I started expecting in a very uncommon way. Someone called me from somewhere. He said, sir. He said, God said, I should send you a check of seven million. Seven. You see that? That manifestation will never have come if my expectation was not hot. This is the place where expectation become but expecting him so the sister who is expected to get married, she'll go to John Lewis and I'll begin to price things you need for your marriage life. The woman who does not have a baby, go and begin, go to mother's care and begin to look at the kind of pampas your baby will carry. Expect. I was expected. You need the person and say, hey, hello, hello. I'm always expecting when they text. I have a sound for my text in my phone. When it makes Nella, you see me go for it. Expectant. Expectant. I'm always looking forward to something. When I wake up in the morning, I say, eh? Hey. Well, you know the door. Yes, if you're good looking, come in. Anything. Throughout this year, good things will come your way. When good things come your way, is the expectant that will see it. If you're not expected, you may not see that that is what it is. You may not see what it is. One highly placed man, Bank in Nigeria, called me. He said, ah, Why have you left me alone like that? Hey, why have you left? Is there anything you want me to do? I said, Wait until the time appointed. I'm expectant. The MD of one of the banks called me. He said, I don't know you. I've never seen you, but I've only had your tape. Can you come and speak at my birthday? I'm the expecting such people, not, not those who are going to be flashing my phone. Oh, my, my phone have about 800 numbers. If you don't call me in three months, I delete your number. You're not adding value. Cannot add value. If I cannot come round to your mind for three months, you can add value. And if you flash me two or three times, I put your number back for life. Because all flashers. Do you know that people flash me here in London? On my London phone? Sincerely. A sister flashed me. So I saw the flash. I said, it's a mistake. Connection error. I waited again. Another flash. Ah, ah. So I called the person. I said, please don't tell me that you are flashing me. <laughs> God will bring you across people who have knowledge to your life. 
receive the anointing for attraction receive the anointing for attention receive the anointing for attraction receive the anointing for attention you will not be able to pass that place without being noticed you will not be able to pass without they see you there's a song one person spoke so song years ago he blessed me he goes like this come searching for me come searching for me everyone the lord has sent to me come searching for me come on come searching for me hallelujah come searching for me hallelujah everyone the lord has sent to me come searching for me come looking come looking for me hey come looking for me hey. everyone the lord has sent to me come looking Look for me is it that it has been an everlasting message but have you received the anointing for this day? Have you received something you can carry with you? The winds of change has come to bring change. Total change! When the postman puts letter to your box, rush it! There will be something in the post for you very soon. Something is coming in the post for you very soon. Something is coming in the post for you very soon. Not junk mail. Stop crushing all the nails. There is something coming in the post. God has given that person an instruction. He has given that person a mandate. He has given that person a direction. Be seated. Hallelujah. When I was waiting on God for this service this morning, I saw the face of the Lord. And the Lord said to me, Call the presence of my power upon my people. Release my word and let my unctions follow it. And as they are open and they receive it. You see, at times you and I have a preconceived way of getting things from God. Why don't you put your hand on my head? So say, put your hand on my head. When the word of God goes forth, it goes with the anointing. The word of God is anointed. Your life has turned right side up. Your feet shall not slide. You will not be disgraced. The armor of light does cover you. The grace of God does fill you up. The power of God does strengthen you. You have a heart from heaven. You will not remain on the same spot. You will not be lost among your equals. Those you look for to look up to will look up to you very soon. Those who thought you would not have things to celebrate will soon become too strong to celebrate with you. You will be fruitful. You'll be exceedingly great in fruits. You will fill the face of the earth with fruits. You will recover from the waste of the past. Your energy is restored. Your glory is restored. The Lord God has touched that situation. And he has corrected the adversities. In the name of Jesus. There are two things I'm going to do. Three things actually I'm going to do. The first one is in obedience to God, the Holy Spirit. God is a God of honor. He honors people. The psalmist said in Psalm 26, verse 8, I love the place where your honor dwells. I love the place where your honor dwells. God sees my heart, I lie not. My conscience bearing witness in the Holy Spirit. I appreciate God so much. I love him. And whenever he tells me to do something, that is exactly what I do. I obey God from the bottom of my heart because I know what the cost of disobedience is. I appreciate your set man here, the pastor of this church. I love him deeply. He also has made exemplary sacrifices in time past. To come to us in Elori. Elori is a very good place. 
He has come there joyfully and gladly at great cost. And the wife released him graciously. And I still remember if I've been coming to Windsor Church for 10 years, that is the longest place I've been coming in my life. Without my mind shaking. Without me praying. You know, there are some people when they invite you, you pray. I mean it, you pray. Why are you praying? You just have to pray. I won't tell you why. So I was just thinking, 10 years uninterrupted. Joy. And that is something that tells you about the fellowship we have. We may not see every year, every month. But at least we see once a year. <laughs> or two times, or three, but we talk. Share things together. And it's somebody I've come to appreciate very deeply. I don't have many friends. You can ask my executive assistant here. I don't have many friends. And I don't have many people I talk to all the time. I talk more to the Holy Spirit. If you lock the door, you'll be hearing me talking. Some people who did not know me in the beginning thought my head had 20. I remember the pastor of a church who invited me in America. So he came, he had me praying to us, I had me laugh, and has me talking. Ah, what do you mean? What do you mean? So when he eventually, when he opened the door, he looked into the I said, What's happening? He said, You are talking to somebody. I said, oh, Yes. He said, Who is that? I said, Holy Spirit. He said, Reverend George. In other words, was telling me, examine yourself. <laughs> Proverbs 23, verse 18. Hallelujah. Shall we rise? Just pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. For a few minutes. Pray in the spirit. Wherever you are seated, I want you to stand up and pray in the spirit. Close your eyes and pray in the spirit. Pray. Pray. Say, Lord, I'm open to you. Do in my life great things. Do in my life wonderful things. Do in my life that which we make me to give testimony. Do great things in my life. Do wonderful things in my life. Do something new in my life. Pray for yourself. Any area of your life where you need God's intervention, ask Him to intervene. You need intervention. In your marriage, you need intervention in your health, you need God's intervention in your finances, you need God's intervention in your business, in your business. Say, Lord, intervene in my life. You need God's intervention in your spiritual life. You are a Christian, but you are not a good one. Pray, God, intervene in my life. Help me to submit myself to you. Help me to submit myself to you. Help me to be submissive to you. Lord, help me to be submissive to you. Help me to be submissive to you, Lord. Legaba lokata yama lokataya. Help me to be submissive to you, Lord. Rege balokota yama lokota yama. Help me to draw near to you, Lord. Draw nigh unto me, and I will 
draw near to you. Lega Badoka Shantaya. Those who are far from me shall perish. Say, Lord, I draw near to you. I don't want to be far from you. I want to see new things. I want my mind to be receptive. I want to hear your voice more. I want to hear your voice more. Every area of my life, I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your voice. I want your guidance. I want your direction. I want you to speak to me. I want you to minister to my heart. Holy Ghost. I want you to minister to my heart. To my life. Make my life beautiful, oh God. Make my life beautiful, oh God. Make my life beautiful, oh God. Cause greatness to emerge out of my life. Cause greatness to emerge out of my life. Cause greatness to emerge out of my life. Make up a look at Whatever is stopping my life, whatever is serving as an obstacle against my destiny, let that thing be crushed now. Let that thing be crushed now. Whatever the thing may be, let them be crushed now. Let them be crushed now. Let them be crushed now. The name of Jesus. Let them be crushed now. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Bow your heads, close your eyes, everyone. Close your eyes, everyone. Pastor, I'm here this morning. I am born again. I'm spirit filled. And I speak in tongues. Raise your hand above your head. I am born again. I am spirit filled. And I speak in tongues. Let the hands remain up. If you are not in that category, which means you want to be born again, you want to be spirit filled, you did not raise your hand the first time, I want you to come forward to me. Wherever you are, come forward to me. I want to pray for you. I want to lay hands on you. I want to lay hands on you. Let that be done quickly. Let that be done quickly. If you are in the ground floor, Wherever you are, come, come, come. Your Let your eyes remain closed. Let's do that quickly. Oh, yes, Let sing it louder. You are need. Let me know you are need. Oh, After me, dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask today that you forgive my sins in the name of Jesus. I confess Jesus as my Lord, as my Savior today, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let the blood of Jesus wash all my sins away in Jesus mighty name Amen Amen follow this brother he will talk to you Hallelujah shall we appreciate the Lord become more 
hope. Become more hope. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So quickly this morning, uh, let's just uh, bring out our offerings. As many that uh, probably will have uh, cash, uh, just reach out to the ushers and package. And as many that will make, will want to make transfers, uh, the account is detailed on the screens. You can just uh, check the screen and uh, do uh, the need for. As many titles we have in the auditorium, please can we just make it to the front even as we pray together this morning. Please, uh, if you are titers, please just come to the front even as we pray together. Let's just bow our head. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you, O oh God, even for the trenches, O oh God, even of your word that has come to us this morning. We thank you, O oh God, because we know that our lives have been transformed. Lord, in our response, Father, we lay down even our offering. We ask in the name of Jesus that this is blessed in the name of Jesus. We declare our seed, O God, in the name of Jesus, even before you, we ask in the name of Jesus, in return, our business will be impacted in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask God that our finances will be impacted in the name of Jesus. Faster things will be done in our life. Better things will be done in our lives. Variety of things will be done in our lives. For as many titans this morning, Father, we ask, O God, that you will bless them. Lord, we give you praise. For in Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Praise God. We'll take this announcement as quickly as we can. Emma Women's Fellowship is inviting every woman in in Rema Chafuyaba to the last early morning riser and it comes up this Saturday the night of December they say it's going to be awesome so let the women plan and prepare to attend uh, no time has, no time was put here so I'm sure you all know the time it has been shared on your platform be ready for Saturday all Sundays we've already been told that Going forward till the first Sunday in January, it's combined service to so 8:30 a.m. for every service. We we'll start to pray by 8 o'clock. December 17, it's our end of the year Thanksgiving service. Can we celebrate Jesus? Yes, I've had a clap. Huh? So today is third. The next Sunday is tenth. So two weeks exactly from now. And it's a combined service at 8.30 a.m. That's the mother of all Thanksgiving for the year. So if you have testimony, please, let's have you just alert any of the ministers so that we can put you on stage. The Youth Fellowship, also known as Addicted to Jesus, the group presents the end of the year get-together. Hey. It says it's time to praise and party with one another. The date is Saturday, the 16th, December, by 2 p.m. In the auditorium upstairs here, yeah? the party begins immediately after the praise at the ground floor. Don't miss it. We are all youth this time. <laughs> Monday, December 25th is Christmas Day. We all know that. But our service holds at 9 a.m. We we'll do our service on Christmas Day. We've never missed it. 9 a.m., not 8.30. Our Passover night service, December 31st. The service comes up 9 p.m. Prompt. Anyone who is interested in deliverance service session, should please, please put their names down in the church office and you'll be contacted at the exact date. The Rema Foundation classes holds every Sunday after second service, except on Thanksgiving Sunday. And the minister on duty this week is Minister Binga Ladikbo. You can get across to him on his phone number. The Dickens on duty are Dickin Bosa Ikberoku, Dickin Koko Uno, Dickin Abiola Oluwatayo, and Dickin Toba Oluboye. Welcome with me. 
Minister Shukbaw. Praise the Lord. All right, we just have one more thing to do before we hand over the mic back to Pastor. Um, there are a number of people in this church who need help, and there is only one pause from which we get our help from, and that is the Samaritan pause. So please, um, we do this once every month, and we're doing it today. So it's time for a Samaritan offering. So I need you to put your hands in your pocket and bring something good. Um, the account is displayed there. We actually prefer that you transfer. I've discovered that more money comes in when you transfer, but when you put cash, uh, you just squeeze in the 1,000 naira in your pocket there. But when you transfer, you can do five, you can do 10, you can do 50. So we prefer that you transfer, praise the Lord. So raise it and let us pray. Father Lord in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to give to the poor. You say those who give to the poor lend to you. And so as many as are lending to you today, Heavenly Father, we thank you because we know you will pay back in leaps and in bounds in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Shout hallelujah. The Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. I want to appreciate all of you. From the beginning of the year you have been coming. To listen. And to adhere to the voice of God. The Lord will bless you for your consistency. I said the Lord will bless you for your consistency. I want all the men in the house rise for recognition. All the men. Where are the men? Praise God. Help me put your hands together for the men. They are also rising up in the ground floor. Put your hands together for them. Thank you for being part of this church, for working in this church. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, take your seat. All the women rise. All the members of the Women Fellowship, God bless you. Put your hands together for all of them. They have been faithful. They have been faithful. Thank you for always coming to church. God bless you. All the singles rise. God bless all of you that have been laboring in God's house. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. All the youths rise. All the youths, teenagers and youth. God bless you. God bless you. Put your hands together for all of them. God bless you. God bless you. All the things have we clapped for you. Well, we have Children's Church. God bless you. God bless you. Music Department. Rise for recognition once again. Let's appreciate them. God bless you. Now, one thing about the music department is that from the fall Sunday, they have been ministering to us here. Let's appreciate them for their effort. Is that how to appreciate our music department? God bless you. God bless you. They have been very, very, very useful to God. And... Uh, the Lord will bless you because of that. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory. The drama department have been ministering to us. Every month, rise up wherever you are. Drama. Members of drama departments. God bless you. 
God bless you. All three departments, they minister every Sunday, every Saturday. God bless you, all three department members. Security and logistics. Come and put your hands together. They may not be in now, but they are outside watching things for us. Put your hands together for them in absentia. God bless you. Counseling department. Put your hands together for all of them. Counseling department members, can you rise? Or they are outside. All right. Evangelism department member. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Choreography department member. Where are they? Where are they? Choreography department member. God bless all of you. Now, we have a wonderful department that have been serving us. And that is technical department. Let's appreciate them. They are doing a great work. Welfare department. We are the welfare department member. Rise. Rise. We are the welfare department member. Put your hands together for all of them. God bless you. Welcome and reception. Where are they? Once we call your member department, just rise. God bless you. Decoration department member. Put your keep putting your hands together for all of them. Decoration department member. Protocol. They have been wonderful. I said rise. Oh, you don't want to be recognized. Protocol department member. God bless you. God bless you. Publicity. Publicity department member. Where are they? God bless you. Intercessory department member. God bless you. Treasury department member. Put your hands together for all of them. Treasury department member. God bless you. Greet us. Where are the greeters? God bless you. God bless all of you. Transport department member. Transport department member. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Sports and recreation department. God bless you. We give God the glory. For all your efforts in the house of God, may the Lord always find you useful. May your zeal never diminish in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we rise everybody? Glory to Jesus. I said glory to Jesus. Uh, by the grace of God, this Christmas time, you will God, God will bless you. In Jesus' name. Our welfare department are already packaging something for you. And by the grace of God, you will be blessed in Jesus' name. I said all departments, make sure, if you can buy a bag of rice, give it to the welfare department. If your department has not done that, please they should do it. At least your department, if a bag of rice is uh, something, by the time you contribute little to money, you'll buy it. The church as a whole has given them money. Individual too will give them money. The department should also do that. The Lord bless you. No, everyone will do Christmas in a good way. In Jesus' name. Look around you and say to that person, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Before we say the other thing, goodness, 
If you are watching me with us for the very first time, wave your hands. This is my first time in Rema Chapel. God bless you. Come and shake my hand. Wherever you are, come up. Come up from the ground floor. Come up. Come and shake my hand in the front here. Yeah. You are here in my Chapel. God bless you. God bless you. You will never be the same. For the Holy Spirit we touch you. I'm blessed your life. God bless you. Wait. Of the Lord we shine. I'm still waiting for you. Of the Lord we rest on you. Of the glory of the Lord we shine. This is your first time in Rama Chapel on a Sunday. You come, never come, be, come, come, come. We never be the same. You will never be the same. You will never be. You will never be the same. God bless you. God bless you. Look at that lady standing. She will welcome you on her behalf. I want to move towards her. God bless you. Put your hands together for this wonderful set of people. Hallelujah. Now, one, two, three, go. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your lives, and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever amen god bless you i see you on tuesday i see you on thursday